new album at the moment. If you listen to it, tell me what TV show it reminds you of. Easy Night for Nightwish's new album. I'll definitely have a look at that at some stage. Yeah, and we are live and in colour. Oh, hello, live and in colour. Hello, ladies and germs and D&D nerds of all ages. Blue Jay, what's up? Good to see you back. Uh, Sunday night again. Jeez, it rolls around quick. Uh, we are re still reeling after uh, last week's episode. Um... She's a traitor. <laughs> uh, Neymar, Neymar is, well, Nutty is here. Uh, we're not sure, uh, not a hundred percent sure exactly what's going to happen tonight. Whether um, a new character will be introduced or not, there's a possibility, but we'll see how we go. But Nutty is here. She, she is in the Discord, um, but she'll be just uh, essentially listening for the most part uh, to begin with. Um, she shine my compass. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I take offense. <laughs> just as long as you bring it back. Um, it's the on, on the I on the done. topic, on the, we've got a little bit of time before we actually get started. So on the topic of the compass, if you did miss it last week, um, I haven't actually done the clip, uh, the clips, the uh, clips of the week yet for the the YouTube. But um, if you go to my um, Twitch channel and you go to the clips, you will find. Um, a clip about the compass which was from last week's show with het going absolutely burko over the compass it is it is an amazing point in the game so funny and i've watched that clip probably a half dozen times already myself it just it gets me every single time so if you haven't already seen it um it's also on the discord under clips and vods you can see it there uh i believe the clip is called compass salt <laughs> which was which was pretty bloody good um but yeah so definitely go check that out and i will get a uh clips of the week up hopefully hopefully sometime during this week i've had a haven't had much time to edit video so but um unless we have any other announcements before we kick it off i think we should uh, roll into the uh in the uh recap from last week which I can listen to in the room so I can make up to you. Uh, okay. I'll have, I'll have one, thanks. The same as what right, same as what I had last time, just not as strong. Yeah, I put my cup on the bench already, lady, where it belongs. Not <laughs> he's not having a good day, people. Um, trying to bury the children. Awesome. So, um, we're just going to go through the recap. Nutty, Nutty doesn't really need to hear any of this. She was here for it. So, um, oh, also, too, now that I've seen it in the chat, uh, every time a nat 20 is rolled tonight, or any night in the D&D, &D, uh, subs in the chat, um, feel free to spam the crap out of the D20 emote. Um, I've actually now found a use for it. So <laughs> Remember, if we get a, D, a natural 20 by myself or the players, spam the D20 in the chat. Um, that'll... Hopefully get some, and also too with the channel points, you can unlock an emote with the channel points. So if you want to, uh, when that happens, you want to unlock the D20 emote and spam it, go for it. So without further ado, we will uh, enter into tonight's recap uh, from episode 23. Uh, you guys started the day with hit, hitting out to Erif's Anvil to collect a gift that Fiela had ordered for him. Uh, Neymaris went to Temple of Helm and um, on her own and handed back her Holy Sigil and Holy Book. The group then sat down and planned on the coming events and what to do next. It was decided that you would have travel to Aris to parlay with Cass the Vampire and retrieve Riffik's family, his wife and daughter, which Neymaris knew very well. Uh, she basically said that she would go with, with or without you guys, so it was agreed that you would all go uh, with her. You went to the Arcanus and teleported to Aris, finding yourself in a hut on the outskirts of the city, which was very unusual. Um, instead of a mage's tower, you proceeded to leave this hut, walk the 15 or 20 feet to the main gates of Aris, and uh, found yourselves within the city streets. Uh, you stopped and asked some of the city guard where to find the lord of the city, 
Uh, following the directions they gave you, you found the manor home of Daramuta and spoke with him about uh, the parlay with Cass. And he informed you that you needed to, to catch up with and, and meet Captain Wolf. And he would lead you to the castle. Het then uh, had a little discussion with Daimuta about uh, Compass. Um, and uh, poor Daimuta was scared shitless of uh, Het, who was very intimidating indeed. With extremely high roll. Um, you then left Daimuta's house after he ran away. <laughs> from the room, terrified of you lot, uh, just wanting to get out of there. He was, he was not only terrified of you, he was terrified of uh, what Cass would do if he found out that he'd given you guys the information that he had. You then uh, moved towards the southwestern side of the city where you did indeed meet up with Captain Wolf. Um, you then were led through the city gates and out onto a series of bridges which led out across the marshlands. Uh, towards the uh, Kiram Roth, which was the keep slash castle where Cass essentially has called his home. Um, across those bridges, one, the whole time, Sadiq's emblem, as his pendant around his neck, was glowing uh, with the glow of the undead quite, quite a lot, um, pretty much making Sadiq feel uneasy, but the group as a whole, knowing that the, they were potentially walking into a trap. Once you reached the castle, you met, and it, or came face to face, and indeed met Cass Agnond, who form, formally introduced himself and proceeded to explain why you were all here. Uh, he cut Het, Het off uh, in mid-sentence and proceeded to it, intentionally call out Sadiq and taunt him about his clan and then asked you all to join him and his master who then made an appearance at this point a large winged figure appearing from the shadows Cass then extended his hand towards Sadiq stating it is time to take your place at his side and shocking to all Neymara stepped forward held out her hand and joined this winged beast and stood at his side, turning to face you. Her eyes were black as coal, emotionless. You uh, didn't know what to do. You you were dumbfounded at this at the, the turn of events. Then at this moment, Cass made some uh, rather interesting remarks. At that point, two of Cass's men tore the throats out of Riffix daughter and wife. Cass then turned to Het, who was standing virtually shoulder to shoulder with him, and said, run, which you all did. You knew you could not face this, this entity at this point. You were not strong enough to defeat him and the 30 or so guards that he had at his disposal. You ran. You ran across the first bridge, keeping a good pace, lungs burning, muscles burning from from keeping this pace for such a long time after what seemed like two or three hours you stopped to catch your breath hit threw up a wall of flame using the alchemy jug to make some uh some oil which you then ignited but at this point by this point you could not no longer hear your pursuers fiala decided then to turn to her benefactor begilia for help and sat down and, and communed with, with his spirit and discovered a way to get back to Valand without having to go back to the city. And with the aid of Hitch Compass, <laughs> you traveled to a large oak tree and there you were able to be teleported via, uh, I'm, I'm, I don't think it's called Tree Stride, it's something similar. Uh, travel via plants, I think it's called, but you were able to teleport back the city of Valand using this large oak tree and Begilia's help. Compass gets player of the day, <laughs> pretty much. Um, so with that, as we pick up our story in episode 24 uh, the um, of tonight's show, which I have labeled uh, Know Thy Enemy. So you are now uh, sitting on the outskirts of Valand. 
you have just stepped out of a large oak tree, um, which is the, the teleportation sensation was definitely not un, unnatural for you guys. You've teleported a few times now, but to do it through a tree was a little bit weird, but you've just sort of stepped out of this tree on, on back onto the familiar territory. You're outside the northern gates of the uh, city of Valand. It is now, by the time you sort of ran from um, Cass's castle, you're pretty much the middle of the night. You're probably looking 11 o'clock at night. Um, so what are you doing? The, the four of you. So David, got a plan? I want to go talk to Thorfi. I agree. Well, that makes all of us, I guess. I assume you too, Fiela. Yes, I definitely do. I'll we'll be out the... this time tonight. So the decision has been made to head towards the Arcanus? Yep. So you guys now have, after spending several months uh, in and around the city, you've gotten to know the city rather well. Uh, those of you with, that were not raised here, you now know your way around fairly well. You, you've been here for quite some time. So without really thinking about it too much, you make a beeline for the Arcanus. Uh, you get to the large guild house with the tower, Mage's Tower attached, and you find that the doors are locked. Bash on the doors. You can bash on the door. After, well, what seems like three or four minutes, five minutes, nothing really happens. You can't hear anything inside. Another five minutes, nothing. Fifteen minutes goes by and, and still nothing. You, you get the impression that either A, no one's here, or B, they're trying to sleep and they're just ignoring you anyway. Can you pick the lock, Ali? Are you good at that sort of thing? I would, but I would assume it's a magical lock, yes. Or you can roll an arcana check to find out. All right. I mean, you would assume that, but whether you know that or not, it's a different story. Fifteen. Fifteen? Um... You you generally uh, your knowledge of locks and looking at the looking at the door you, you you look at it and it's a really simple lock locking mechanism, but you you know enough about locks and enough about mages to know that if this door is locked it is probably locked with uh, some form of magical means. It won't be just locked with a basic mechanical lock. We'll just get Namaras to hack it. To oh, never mind. And uh, well, we could all we could all put our weight into it and try to belt the thing down. As you guys are sort of sitting, standing around the front of the uh, the the mage's tower, or the arcanus there, and discussing ways to breach this door, a city guard patrol enters the 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 sort of the bit of the square. It's almost like a square where in front of the arcanus here before it sort of breaks off into a road to the rest of the streets. But the, you you all notice uh, a patrol of uh, six city guard obviously doing their nightly patrols to sort of enter into the area behind you. Uh, they're not being quiet. They're talking and, and uh, you can hear their, the armor and shields sort of clattering as they approach. Do you mind if I talk to them, team? Maybe we should ask them where Thorfi sleeps at night. No, not so ominously, but you know. Urgent guild business. We need to speak to the head mage. There we go. So what did, did you say that to the guard? I'm telling that to the others. Someone else can relay that. So that they're probably 40, 50 feet away from you, so they're not walking directly to you, but they're, they're on their patrol route. They're walking through this sort of the, this makeshift square, and they'll probably be heading off to another direction shortly. But so you All can right. definitely approach definitely them if you want. Approach. All right, head, you approach. Be nice. Head approaches the guards. 
get some of that to the shit out of him if you have to. I don't care. <laughs> he gets out to me and says, Hey, guards, I have a message. Uh, they all sort of stop, sort of abruptly, sort of no, noticing you. They all know who you are. I mean, they're, they're part of the city guard. Uh, and uh, uh, evening, evening. What has you uh, out to this time of night, Mr. Hit? We have reason to believe there is assassins uh, going to attack Thorfi. We need you to bash down the door right now. Assassins? What? What? What are you talking about? Assassins? We had a meeting with Casagnon, and they are assassinating Thorfi. Get the fucking door open now. <laughs> Roll a persuasion check. That would be eighteen. The guard sort of looks at you. And then sort of half cocks his head to one side and says to you, Are you pulling my leg? What are you on about, Het? Major's Tower's protected by magics. No one's getting in there. Hmm, okay. Let me go this another way. If someone doesn't open that door soon, I'm going to start eating you. <laughs> <laughs> and with with that threat, the the five other guard behind this this he, he looks like he's probably a sergeant of some description. Um, back off half a foot, maybe a, a like a step or so, and enter into a battle stance. Shields forward, spears on top of his shield, almost uh, in a shield wall type scenario. The sergeant himself uh, does almost the same thing: steps half a step back, shield up. Hand on his sword. And he, he just sort of looks at you. He doesn't say anything. He just, he's at the ready. Do you people have, uh, what are you? Are you humans? Are you thick? I said this place could be under attack. We need to get in and find out. Is, could you just send a message at least? My God, they go into battle stance for the heroes of their city. Idiots. <laughs> And with that, the, the guard turned, uh, leans over his sh put shield a little bit towards you and says, Mr. Het, uh, I'm not sure what you've been drinking, but uh, no one's attacking the city. We, we have several guard on the walls, and there's going to be no assassination attempt. I, I think you need to go sleep it off. Okay, Sadiq, Ali, Fiona, I've done my best. It's up to you. Namara is being We need to talk to Thorpey. I'd like to cast Charm Person on the sergeant. Wait. Namara <laughs> <laughs> has been captured. We need to talk to Thorpey now. Captured? What do you mean, captured? Did we kick the thickest guards in the city? <laughs> it does seem that way, city. We were on a mission. Namaris has been captured. We need to talk to Thorpey. Roll a persuasion check for me as well. I mean, the city guard here aren't exactly the brainiest bunch. <laughs> they are just a stumbling wandering guards. 19. 19? Ooh. With that, um, the, the sergeant sort of doesn't break his defensive stance, but sort of, you can see him physically relax a little bit more. And um, he sort of looks out, looks at Het, still a little concerned about Het, but he looks over at you, um, Alessandros, and, and says, I don't recognize you from the guild. Are you, are you new? Didn't yes, you guys have, a, have like a, another lady with you? Like a shorter, oh, yeah. darker head? Like elf girl, woman, yeah, uh, human. Uh, apparently, she did a runner. He goes. Uh, he, he gives you the a really dubious look, and uh, and then says, "Ah, oh, well, I can't open the door, but I we can I can go talk to uh, Breton and and see if he can send a message to Thorfi. That once they're shut up for the night, it's all I said. It's all magic. We we just." Control the streets. We can't open someone's house. 
I guess that'll have to do then. I mean, I can't, I can't guarantee that he'll want to see you guys tonight. I mean, if indeed Namaris has been captured, as you say, then I dare say he'd want to know about it. But uh, as I say, we don't, we don't have that capability. I could, we'll, I'll send one of these guys off to, to talk to Breton, and, and do you want him to uh, potentially meet you here or Guildhouse? Or, or what, what is easiest for you guys? Probably good at Guildhouse. That way we can rest a little bit and have food. Oh, I'll yeah, see, and he, and he sort of turns around to one of the guys and says, Oi, Steve, get back to the barracks and let Breton know what's happening. Need, uh, need to wait for Thorfi, send a message, something, uh, whatever, just hop to it. And um, you see one of the guards sort of salutes and then takes off at a like a double-time march. Good old Steve. And, uh, and so he takes off. Um, so... The guard then turns back to you, Het, and says, uh, Mr. Het, I, I'm pretty sure you need to get some rest still. You, you, you're not looking too too good there. Uh, sure you haven't been drinking anything. A, uh, I mean, you're not really going to try and eat us, are you? I wouldn't put it past him right now. We, we, don't, we don't want to have to arrest you, of course. I mean, that's what would happen if you tried to eat us. I mean, He's just frustrated. We've had a shit night. We need something done. <laughs> well, I've, I've, I've done what I can. I mean, it, it, Steve should be back. Well, he'll be talking to Breton within 10 or 15 minutes, and, and then I'm not sure how long it'll take for Breton to get his message to Thorfi and for Thorfi to meet you guys. He may not, like I said, he may not even want to come tonight. He may wait. Uh, may want you to wait until the morning. I don't know. But if, if, that's, a, if that is everything, uh, we must be on the, to finish our parole. Uh, patrol. Patrol. Got to finish our parole right now. Uh, excuse me. I've got to finish my parole thing, you know. Maybe I've been drinking a little too. So is there anything uh, else? Yeah. <laughs> mm, budget guards, huh? <laughs> Uh, with that, if if no one has anything else to say, they sort of to get themselves back into their patrol formation and head on their merry way, uh, continuing their patrol of the city streets. This leaves you still on the steps of the guild uh, of the Arcanus Guildhouse. Oh, excuse me. Um, where do you want to go from here? Do you want to stay and wait, or do you want to head back to the guildhouse? I think we all need to sit down and have a talk together. At least have something to eat because we haven't eaten. Oh, we had a short, we had a short break and then had something to eat then, but we haven't eaten most of it. Hey, we might as well go get drunk. <laughs> well, if the imbeciles of this town are willing to help us instantly, I guess it's the only way to go. Go to the guild house, it's free, right? It is. It is indeed. Yep, so um, let's go get drunk. Back to the guild house you go. It'll take it takes you about forty minutes from the Arcanus, forty fifty minutes to get to the guild house. And Again, we could always yeah. uh, we could always ask the um guild head if he can get in touch with Thorpe quicker. At this yeah, at this time of too. the night you know that, that uh Riffin is definitely asleep. And he is not a not a happy man when he's been woken up. You've already done it at least once. <laughs> Do we give a shit right now? No. <laughs> Probably not, but uh, j just to let you guys know that he he's definitely asleep. You guys know that. Uh, whether you decide to wake him is up to you. Uh, but you indeed head back to the guild house and um, it is unlocked as it always is. You enter into the main guild hall. Um, you are the only ones in the guild hall at this hour. By this time, it should be just past midnight. So, uh, essentially, you know where everything is. You know where the food and everything's kept. There, there are a couple of cooks sort of milling around, ready to cook food if you want to cook some food, and they will uh, offer you drinks and to provide you drinks if you need it. Yeah, I'm going to just make a plate of food and 
a maid and go sit down. No problem. That's Riffic. Different. <laughs> Wrong character, guys. Riffin, Riffic. You got Riffic. You got Riffic, Riffin, Griffin, Puffin. I mean, is, is, yeah, they're all out there. Riffin? <laughs> <laughs> So I mean, you, he's locked up anyway, so who cares what he wants? Yeah, Riffic is locked up still. Uh, so you get your you get food if you want food. You you are supplied supplied the drink of your choice, and you all sit uh, in the guild hall um, and uh, pretty much contemplate, talk about whatever you want to do with, about the uh, preceding events. So Sadiq, or is it Darm? <laughs> Do you care to talk about that? Yes, I was going to ask the same thing. It's a thing with my order. When you join the order, you take another name. So Pretty which much name that's is what it is. Well, Dam was my name before the order. Sadiq is my name now. So why is he calling you Dharm? Because he's old. Oh. And he, and he thinks it means more to me than what it used to, and it doesn't. So do we think that Nemeris was always evil, or are we going to assume that she's stuck and needs rescuing? He's a traitor. I'm not going to assume anything until I talk to Thorfinn because he's the one that's known her the longest. I do agree, but she gave her hand in an instant, almost without a thought, which drives me absolutely insane. I thought she was part of us. Why did she not hesitate at least a little? No, straight to the enemy. It makes me wonder if I shouldn't have done something about her earlier on. Did you have an idea earlier on? Myself and Ellie did see her do some strange things. We sort of knocked off her sleepwalking, but looking back, maybe it was a sign. And how do we know that Dorothy is not going to tell us the truth? Because we'll probably have him at the throat with a knife at his neck. Yeah, that works. Guess we have to see what sort of answer he gives us first. Oh, but I am up for some fighting. That's all well and good, but after this is done with Thorfi, what are our plans? Are we going to go after the vampires? I really hated walking away from that vampire. I guess I'm a sore loser, but I just didn't like it. Agreed. Sadiq, do you know any other vampires we can that are getting targeted? Do I? Um, roll a intelligence check for me with advantage. Oh, shit rolls either way. 10 is the highest I got. 10? Pretty much all you needed. So you're pretty, I mean, with with your with your order and the knowledge you've got of the area, um, uh, where is my... Oh. You do know of uh, a potential vampire threat here in the Howling Mountains in this district, um, which is... There is a rumor, it's, it's a rumor, there's been sightings of, of a potential vampire and uh, that lurks in the crypts beneath the bastion of the X, which is uh, Eric, sorry, the bastion of Eric the Awesome. Eric the Awesome was an adventurer, uh, well, former adventurer and former headmaster of the Adventurers Guild. Uh, there has been rumors surrounding his disappearance, disappearance and recent sightings of a figure wandering the grounds of his castle uh, at night. Um, yeah, Eric Steve's mate. 
so um with the information that you have you know that the bastion of x the author the awesome is to the west east of uh, uh Valon, along the coastline so you pretty much from from Voland, you guys looking at the map would probably take you three to four days by horse so if I show you the map here, so you don't have to bring up your own maps. Here we go. So you've got Volant here on this coast. You follow the coastline along to the east, and you have the bastion of Echix. Be awesome. Echix. So I'm going to yeah, do that information, but at the same time, port at a point at uh alessandris and say but we now have time to deal with your crap what crap what are we talking about <laughs> the wanted notice on your head i've got something i've got something in the works i don't know if it's um fine. can everyone roll a perception check for me please Hit is just looking at the floor he gets a three <laughs> yes hit you're a little bit preoccupied 19. 19. Nat 20. Nat 20. So 24. Mm, 22. Okay, so Sadiq, Fiela, and Alessandra, uh, with the, uh, you would have all noticed as you walked in um, that the, uh, you would have noticed it probably more so than anyone else straight away, but you'd sort of, you would, all of you were sort of a little preoccupied, but as you were talking about this wanted poster, there is indeed a wanted poster posted on the guild notice board, uh, quite visibly pinned on top of everything else. And um, the it is the wanted poster for the Changeling Murderer. And the bounty has been increased from, I believe, 1,000 gold out to 5,000 gold. Go over, grab it, walk up to... Um, Ali and go, I don't think it's being dealt with. You know, I don't think so either. <laughs> so guess what we're about to do. Where is the hand in spot for that anyway? Uh, you would essentially go to the barracks and hand, hand, uh, hand them over to be arrested. Is or that, no, uh, uh, well, no, the actual, where is the town that it's for? Ah, Beaufort is the town it is for. I believe, and let's put a double check. So, Sadiq, the plan is to hand Ellie over? Yep. We're going to deal with this crap. I'm not going to have a wanted criminal with us. Uh, if if he's innocent, he's innocent. If he's not, he's not. So fine. Uh, you can, you can hand him in, in at any, it says on there that you can hand him in at any uh, magistrate or head of city guard uh, anywhere in the realms. So tomorrow uh, morning it is. Yep. Hang on, I'm just got to find out whether it is Beaufort. I'm pretty sure it's Beaufort. Yeah, Beaufort. That's not how it works, Trash. That's not what how what works. <laughs> you can't natural. just redeem a natural 20. <laughs> I say you can't redeem a natural 20. <laughs> hey, I can try. <laughs> That was it was it was worth it. I mean that was kind of worth it, but yeah, no. Um, so yes, yeah, so by the order of um, the Lords of Beaufort, which is the um, council that presides over the town of Beaufort. And where's where is actually Beaufort from here? Is it like close or is it far away? Uh, Beaufort is uh, on your map. I've got to remember, I've got to remember. I would I would bring up a map, but the problem is I can't remember where I bloody saved the thing. Right. Hello. So Beaufort, uh, if you look at your map, uh, compared to well, compared to Volant, uh, you would know where Beaufort is, um, Sadiq, because it's directly across the channel from Beepole. Is there a teleporter thing in Mijiki close by? Um, not to Beaufort. Uh, the closest city that you would be able to teleport to would probably be 
Ooh. Actually, I don't think there's any teleporter in that area of the... of the. Um... But, but can't we just hand him in to anyone? You can hand, him, you can hand him in to any any magistrate. So it doesn't. Yeah. you don't have to yeah. take him to Beaufort. You can hand him in in, in Belant, and they will try him there. And it, well, if that's and, if that's if that will work, yeah. we'll do that. Get it get it over and done with. I've been betrayed once. I'm not going to have anyone in the party that has a dirty seat. I feel the same way. I'm just. I know Ellie's a good. Well, I think Ellie's a good person. I don't even know anything anymore. I'm just going to shut up. <laughs> well, it, it's not a dirty secret. He said he's innocent. Well, if if he's innocent, it's no secret. We'll let the law decide if he's innocent or not. Also, are we going to tell Riffic about his family or what happened? Or are we just going to let that go? Oh, crap, there is that too. Mm, we can do that in the morning, I guess. Well, I'll probably be the same spot anyway. We hand Ali in and then we in and see Riffic and say, hey, by the way, you won't care if you get hanged. Um, <laughs> and yeah, that'll be good. It's going to be a fun day tomorrow. Well, that being said, I'm going to retire to my room. Shall we leave someone with you? Because I don't think you will stay in your room if you know you're hanging. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You're going to be sleeping with the rest of us tonight. Jeez, I think we're um, Sadiq, since you offered, I think you two should, uh, bunk up. Yep, I'll bunk up with, um, Ellie. So you're gonna tonight. spend, uh, you're gonna bunk him with Alessandros and make sure that she does not try to vacate the premises during the evening? Um, what I'm gonna actually suggest is that we do a watch type thing with Ellie so that, <laughs> uh, everyone can get a good night's sleep and not be suffering from any um, fatigue the next day. That was a good plan. Hit just needs to go quickly now to a temple and just melt on his thoughts before we do that, if that is fine. That's up to you. Praying, I'll, to, I'll you, praying to your God will be good. I'll, I'll, I'll you... come to your head. Uh -huh. No, you will stay with Sadiq. <laughs> Uh, um, do you, uh, Alishonis, at this point, uh, do you try and re res uh, resist and go with Het, or do you concede and stay and concede to stay with Sadiq? Resist and go with Het. Does anyone try and restrain Alishonis from leaving? I'm going to restrain Alishonis from leaving. Oh, um, God. <laughs> the, is there a room? That is amongst one of ours that doesn't have a window. Uh, Hit's room did not have a window. Uh, Actually, Hit, no, Hit's um, room did have a window. Uh, Namaris's room would not have had a window. Sorry. I got okay, Namaris's room it is then. So one with, I'm going the one to with the broken strength door. check first. <laughs> uh, strength, yeah, strength for yeah, strength for strength to see if you're able to stop Alessandrus. Ophelia, uh, are you going to uh, try and stop him, uh, stop Alessandrus as well? Uh, Sidney, I have an idea, but I don't think Ali would like it. Do you, like, Does Ali have much of a choice? <laughs> um, no, we'll go with the, the nice restraining first before we pull out anything else. Well, it's nice and soft and webby. Uh, what, are you, what are you doing, guys? Hit will help him turn around and push Ali into Sidney to assist anyway. Okay, so uh, based on that, uh, you can still do whatever you're going to do, Fiala, um, but Sadiq rolls strength check with advantage. Oh, he's screwed. What's your strength, uh, strength check? That would be a 26. And uh, <laughs> Alexandrus? <laughs> I'm not going to be able to beat that. Probably not. not uh, even with a natural 20, you can't beat it. So, um, yeah, with... with uh, hit turning around and, and pushing you back you sort of backpedal in, into Sadiq and Sadiq wraps you up in almost like a bear hug and sort of wraps his ha uh, arms around you and, and you just you try and squirm and you, you just can't seem to get your hands free. Uh, Fiona what were you doing? 
Um, I like to follow him into the bedroom and, and I'm going to ask Allie to get comfy on the bed. So she that sounds take, bad. Take her to uh, Namaris's old room. Yep. And uh, drop her on the bed. <laughs> uh, him, shim. shim. Shim on the bed. Shim on the bed, yep. Thanks for the buddies, twin. Appreciate it, buddy. And Fiela, what are you doing? I'm so sorry, Ali. I really do believe in you. I'm going to wild shape into a spider and see if I can web him to the bed. Ooh. <laughs> awesome. a uh, I'm assuming a giant spider because a small spider probably wouldn't do it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Alessandra, you watch as Fiela in front of you, um, her whole form shifts and changes into that of a giant tarantula-like spider and starts to spin a web to and essentially webbing you to the bed you're lying down she webs starts at your feet up and over the bed and round and round and eventually the point where you're up to your almost up to your mid chest and shoulders uh completely encased in webbing it's it's an unusual feeling it's not something that you'd ever thought you would ever happen have happened to you having you uh, being webbed webbed to a bed or even webbed up by a giant spider. It is kind of creepy, to say the least. Sadiq, it is even creepy to watch, um, but also quite fascinating at the same time. But uh, Alessandris, you are now incapacitated yeah, 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 and restrained. Yeah. Uh, you are unable to move. You can still speak. You still move your head and everything else, but you are unable to move your pretty much your whole body. Head would have also waited to make sure he was restrained before head left. Not a problem. Oh, the trust is awesome around here, isn't it? <laughs> I do trust you. So with, uh, with that, um, before, who is going to take the, the first Maris thing over Alexandrus? I'll take first watch. Right. It won't be long, but he will be back for his watch. No problem. So with that, we'll leave. We'll leave the group there with uh, with Alexandrus at the moment restrained, and we will follow Het to his temple. Just as Het leaves, he says, "Fiela, just a quick word outside the door for a moment." Alrighty. Uh, can we shut the door? Is it still broken? Uh, you can't. It's it's been repaired to a point where it can be closed. It just can't really be locked. You good for a minute, Sadiq? I'm okay. You could just you know, shut the door and I'll stand in the doorway. Sweet. Um, so he gets out where he gets alone with Fiat for a moment and he just says, I just wanted to thank you for that gift you gave me. Um, it is very cool, very pretty, and uh, I appreciate it. It's well thought out. Well, I see you writing a lot all the time, so... I figured you'll probably need a new one eventually. So there you are. I will never use another notebook again, except for when I run out of notes in this notebook. If I fill it up, of course, I'm going to have to get a, another one. But And the pen, never mind. Anyway, my point is, thank you. I, I do appreciate it. Um, now, if you excuse me, I, I apologize. I must go and be with my thoughts for a moment. All right, Ed. Good night. Uh, hit roll a perception check for me just quickly. <laughs> Five. Yeah, okay. <laughs> now you're good. <laughs> and, yeah, okay. And hit carries on. I uh, will head over to the Steel Lady out, just outside of the town, the Steel Lady place I went last time. The, the temple, no sorry. problem. You do indeed head out to the small shrine slash temple church thing that uh, was erected for the steel lady uh you enter again at this out by the time you sort of get out there you look in we it, it's going to take you an hour or hour or so to get out there but you look in probably 1 30 2 o'clock in the morning by the time you actually get to the temple so there's literally no one around it's very very quiet um it, the night is er very erringly still it's um you can't there's no sort of of none of the normal night sounds you would normally hear it's kind of Kind of strange. Um, so with no one in there, he sort of goes to the front of the sort of church area and takes his bended knee, one knee, and he, he talks out loud 
um, not super loud, but just, you know, grumbling to himself. And he says, ah, Maggie of the Thatch, when death calls, I seem to fall apart. Feels like the doctor said that I have a hollow head. I feel, I feel like I'm living on borrowed time. And I know it gives me shivers. I don't want to have a meltdown, but I need to know one brother, another brother, now someone in the party who I felt was a sister gone and it's driving me insane and I need to know what to do. Where do I turn? I hear no voice. Let me know my next path. Show me a sign. And Thank as you, you yeah, as you sort of trail off that last last word, um, give me a sign. You, a breeze sort of blows through the temple, even though the, the doors are closed. It it's not a natural breeze. It sort of whips up. It's, it's not cold, but it's uh, kind of warmish, and it sort of swirls up in front of you. And as you sort of look up, uh, you, as your eyes come up, you're almost looking directly into the face of the steel lady herself. She's not completely corporeal. She's very translucent and almost ghostly in, in the way she looks. But you have seen etchings of her and, and think this is the first time you've actually seen her this way. So it, it's almost a little startling to you, but kind of comforting at the same time. And she smile, smiles down at you and um, says to you, Kit, you, you are troubled and confused. I'm unable to help you seek what, what it is you're after. But I do know of one that may be able to give you the tools necessary to aid you in the completion of your journey. You need to follow a small path to the, to the west of this temple, into the forest, and you shall find him. And as she said that last word, she slowly sort of just fades and dissipates in, in that wispy sort of swirling uh, wind sort of wisps up around around you again and then is gone and everything is still once more. Do uh, you rises. follow her instructions? Yeah, Hit rises to his feet and he reaches into his pouch and pulls out the compass and says, Where's they? <laughs> Lucky I brought one of these with me. Thank you. Thank you, lady. Thank you, Maggie of the Thatch. And he heads out west holding his compass so he knows which way it is. <laughs> so as you it's not dark dark like a, there is a bit of a moon out and there's a bit of a cloud break uh it's not completely clear but it, there is enough moonlight for you to travel um you follow your compass seems like 20 minutes half an hour 35 minutes and you come to a break in the trees this is a small small clearing but in that clearing you see a small makeshift hut almost like a tent that has been sort of erected quickly and had thatch put over the the roof and um you can see a faint glow of candlelight coming from within uh do you approach uh it has been told to by the steel lady who he trusts completely so he approaches with no no pause so you approach the small tent and as if knowing that someone was coming the flap that covers the entrance of the tent moves to one side uh on its own no one's standing there but it moves uh, to one side to allow you entry do you enter it enters it assumes he has to duck slightly he does it is not a, it's not a, a a huge tent but it's big enough to to fit head in but he does have to duck slightly to enter and uh, as you get to the interior tent, you sort of you sort of look around. You, you can't see anyone at this point, but you see a number of candles that are magically floating around the, out, the exterior of the tent, um, emitting uh, typical sort of glowing candlelight. 
they don't seem to be dripping any wax they definitely are not causing any damage to the tent they're quite close to the tent's edge but there's no, nothing's burning um inside these are these is all sorts of different barrels and crates small table and on the table is also a, is, is a skull with a candle atop of it um this candle looks more more like a, a natural candle wax is all flying around over the skull through the skull's eyes and, and things like that and you hear uh almost a hissing kind of metallic rattling and then you hear take a seat young hit and as you sort of move forward to take that seat and as you sit down you sort of your eyes focus and start sitting in front of you is a hunched hooded figure and with that candlelight that's from the center of the table you can see the candle candlelight sort of dancing off a metallic plate across where the eyes would normally be of of any living creature you see the the steel sort of glistening in that in that candlelight across where the mouth would be large steel stitches almost holding generally holding the jaw shut you can hear him speaking but it does not look he look like this entity is even able to speak and at the moment your butt hits that seat the creature lurches forward very quickly and and it does startle you a little bit and the hood pulls back and what you see before you is a uh, is just a, a skull a large almost almost unnaturally large but a big skull like the, the figure is hulking in its size and again big metal plates with chains hanging sort of part way down from where his ears would be and once again you hear that voice i can help you find what you seek bend the knee and accept my boon do you say anything well uh yeah he, he stays seated looking at the face of the creature and he says well the steel lady pointed me in this direction this is what i must do i shall and he does exactly what he asks so as you push you stand up you push the seat back a little give you room and then as you're as you bend the knee and sort of bow your head slightly towards this figure the figure stands and you you hear an almost fiendish style laughter <laughs> and with that you feel this energy flow through you it is something that is not natural to you it does not feel natural it feels almost like it burns your very soul but it feels powerful you feel that you whatever you need to do you could potentially now do you have you feel like you have just taken on something that can put you on on the path that you seek and as you rise and your eyes focus again you look around and you're no longer in the tent the tent's gone you're standing in an open clearing no sounds sky above nothing but that sensation that warm almost burning sensation in the center of your chest is still there still lingering it slowly it starts to fade Hit gathers his thoughts and he thinks it's time to head back because he doesn't want to leave the others in lurch too long. He thanks the steel lady and he thanks whatever this creature is and he carries on back uh, to the deal house. As you turn, uh, make a perception check. Which is much better. 16. Take your first step forward as you go to turn and head back towards town and your boot strikes something hard 
you feel it you really it's actually quite prominent you feel it under your boot and it's almost like it almost pierces the bottom of the sole of your boot sort of lift your foot and look down and what you find is a series of small again small metal plates some metal hooks they're all it's all interlinked and it looks almost like the face of this creature it's, it's just a small trinket but it's completely metallic it's it's intricate in, in the way that it's made and you i mean you recognize it instantly as it all it's <laughs> almost identical to the plates and bits and pieces that were on the skull's face uh so do you pick it up yes it picks it up it's obviously a sign do you pick it up and as you pick it up um in your hand one of the the edges is quite sharp and it pierces the palm of your hand and Ouch. it bleeds it bleeds a little bit not not a huge amount but as you watch as you watch the palm of your hand and you watch the the sort of the blood flow down to the center and under the symbol the blood sort of flows towards the symbol and it, t it seems to almost be absorbed by it and then as you sort of watch that wound heals right before your eyes and you then uh, what do you what do you do it is you kind of caught off guard by it it's not something you expected to have the wound heal right before your eyes but um you sort of stand there staring at the symbol for for some time and you just keep you keep hearing his voice replaying over in your head that i can help you i i you take my boon do what you need to do Pet looks at the mark where it should be cut but it's healed or pierced at least and he thinks that it's pretty cool so uh, he takes the trinket and he puts it in his pack and carries forward uh, like i say back to the guild house to take his watch and you you do that so it'll take you again about an hour and a half because you you've moved a bit outside the city so take about an hour and a half hour and 40 minutes to re uh, return to the uh, guild house so while Hit was away doing that, uh, were the, was there anything you got, you, Sadiq and Fiala, was there anything you guys wanted to do in that sort of hour, hour and a half that, that uh, Hit was away? I will be in my trance for my turn to go out when it's time. Yep. And You'll whatever take your Sadiq four does. hours of meditation. You need a full four hours of meditation to get your full night's rest. Correct. So, Sadiq, uh, what are you doing at this point? You're in the room with Alexandrus. Uh, are you guys yes. talking about anything, doing anything? I'm trying to get no. comfortable to try and go to sleep, but that's been hard. <laughs> You're not I uncomfortable. Can help you I mean, for... <laughs> You wouldn't it's be uncomfortable. Right. You're, you're, you're on a bed. If you want to, Ellie. <laughs> I used the good soft stuff. It is kind of sticky, but it, it's warm. Yeah, I try to make Ellie as comfortable as possible and say, look, no hard feelings, but I've already been betrayed once tonight. I really can't be bothered with any more. Fair enough. Uh, Sadiq, make a perception check for me. Twenty-three. Twenty-three. Um, before before we carry on, uh, how is the room lit? Uh, it's well lit with a couple of, um, you know, torches because I know Ali's abilities of moving in shadow. Okay. <laughs> so with that in mind, um, as, as you're sitting there sort of telling Alessandro, hey, look, really sorry, but it's, it's nothing personal, but we really need to get to the bottom of this before we can move forward. Um, you hear footsteps walk up to the door, stop, and you hear something be pushed under the door and then you hear those footsteps walk away again 
uh, go up and have a look at what the thing being pushed underneath the door. As you sort of get up and walk towards the door and you look down and, and there is a piece of folded parchment that has been passed under the door. Pick it up, look at it. Look at it. Um, you open it up and um, I will DM you what is on this piece of parchment. That just makes it more interesting. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, guys. So many secrets. It is a, a simple sentence written in common. Yeah. Very interesting. Do I see this or you would you would definitely see him get up and move to the door you you would yeah from your position you'd definitely be able to see that he's picked something up you probably wouldn't be able to see what it was but you've seen him sort of with his back to you looking like he's reading something or doing something with his back turned to you but you've definitely noticed he's done something at the door you wouldn't know what it is what are you doing today nothing uh -huh. <laughs> And with that, and like I say, in, in, in about an hour and a half or so, it returns. Uh, Fiona's still probably meditating at this point. Uh, so Hit does return, and he returns to, to Namarish's old room and um, walks in. And you are now back together with Sadiq. Hit. Uh, how's it going? Everything good? Yes, everything's good. Um... Yeah, I'm gonna. Can you just DM that to Head? Because I'm gonna, gonna pass, pass him to gonna that. Pass it to him? Yeah, I'm gonna say just yeah, you know, so that you know. And then say, are you ready to take over your part of the watch? I sure am ready. Yeah. I'll, I'll leave you with the note and um, go to get my red. Okay, so you take off. To get your rest, um, yes, please. Um, hit you then take a seat in this well lit room, which Sadiq has uh, passed that information on to you that uh, you need to keep the room well lit in order to stop uh, Alshonus from using her abilities to escape. And uh, you take your turn at the watch. Head reads the note, folds the note up, and puts it into his pack. Do I see it out? Um, do you do it uh, discreetly? Nope. You do see this, I'll show you. What are you reading, Head? Just a note that Sadiq handed me. You should be sleeping. Hopefully tomorrow works out well for you. It's a bit hard to sleep, but I'm like in this situation. It'd probably actually be pretty easy for you to sleep because you're pretty comfortable. You should DM. <laughs> God <Might>. has spoken. <laughs> Might I make a suggestion, Nelly? Yes. You could start counting like sheep. I've heard that works for some people. <laughs> you, you wouldn't think about letting me go by any chance, would you? I tell you what. And hit moves closer, like whisper stance. Not not too close, sort of about half a meter. It sort of leans forward and it's cool, whispery breath and goes, I'll think about it. I do like you. I think you're a nice person, but I don't want to let the team down. I don't want to see evil 
hear evil or hear evil be spoken. Therefore, I shall not speak nor do any evil myself. So let's just wait it out and see what the team says in the morning. I'm sure if you ask again, things may change. Okay. Righto, where's my seat? I need to watch you. So essentially directly across the room from the bed is a small seat, uh, chair and a table with a with these like there's a candle on the table. There's two brightly lit torches which uh, Sadiq has informed you must keep lit to um, prevent any shadows falling over where Alexandra is sleeping or laying. Hit, make sure the candles are not too low. And if they are, he swaps them out. He also casts light on the chair he is sitting on. He turns the chair around like the phones and sits on it backwards. <laughs> God, really? <laughs> the room the room is only 20 by 20, so that light illuminates the entire room in a bright, radiant light. He covers, he's, he covers the chair with a sheet so it's a little less radiant. <laughs> it's light enough that, Alishonis, you you, uh, you know that you are, will be unable to use your shadow yeah, step. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> but it's not light enough that it'll prevent you from sleeping. Then Hit waits out his time for the next watch, which I assume is about four hours. Probably about two or three hours. Um, oh, yes, Fiala, that's right. Yeah, Fiala's only probably got an hour or so, an hour, maybe an hour and a half left of her meditation. So probably only a couple of hours, you'd be fine. And Fiala will take over she, once she's got her rest. So oh. um, mm -hmm. before we do that, Fiala, do you want to do something outside? Yeah, I'd like to wake up if I can and get to the edge of the woods. Do that. So I'll walk out now, go to the edge of the woods. It'll take you about an hour I'll to get find... there, but you will get there. And I'm gonna look for I'm gonna look for some smooth stones and I'm gonna try and build like a cairn, kind of like a memorial yep. pile for Nemeris to myself. And I'm going to sit with it for a little bit and let some tears flow and use druid craft. And one by one, I'm going to have little mushrooms grow in a circle around it oh. and say, if you are a traitor, thank you for the memories of what I thought you were. If you're not, I will come and find you and free you. And then... After a little bit, I'm gonna walk back. And yeah, while while you're sitting there, and and sort of going through this, and and the, as the mushrooms sort of grow, and, and it's a range of mushrooms. It's not it's not just mushrooms. A few toadstools come up as well because you know you knew knew Namaris had trouble distinguishing what were mushrooms and what were not. So in her honor, you uh, not only grew a couple of mushrooms, you grew a, a few different types of toadstools. Uh, and things like that and while you're sitting there just quietly sort of doing this you glance off into into the forest as you do i mean you're out with nature and you see that white stag just sort of standing on the edge on the edge of the forest and the stag is also weeping uh along with you uh with the loss of your friend and I'm going to take out this little tree sculpture she gave me on our first loot together <laughs> and um, I'm going to set it on top and just walk away slowly, nodding at the stag in recognition as I leave. And the stag acknowledges your presence by sort of bowing its head and, and sort of stamping its foot a couple of times and then turns and heads back into the forest. You get back to the to the guild. And you indeed relieve Het. Um, so Het was, was probably about three hours by the time um, Fiala returned and uh, took over from you. So Het, you retire I, to your own room. Uh, Het stays in the room here okay. with, and tries to sleep on the floor. But first, he takes the note from his bag and he hands it to Fiala and says, this Sadiq gave me earlier on when I came from my watch, I assume he wants me to give it to you as well. Um, but nothing has changed at this point. Also, keep the light up. We know that Ellie can be tricky as much as I like. So I have deemed you that note. And the discussion. Let's see. 
as much as I like Shim, we must keep Shim happy <laughs> and healthy and contained. And then Hit, Hit sort of goes down to the floor beside the bed where Ellie is and um, goes to sleep on the floor. Okay. He doesn't worry him. He's a cold creature. During all that time, I'll do mate hand and do a knock on the door. Not for no reason at all, just to make them squirm a bit. Give me one you, second. You're going to do this on my watch, bitch? <laughs> Give me one second. I've just got to check something here. According to what I read, I can do it without semantic or verbal. Now that's part of your ratio, isn't it? No, that's the um, feet. That's what I mean. It's part of it's something that you've got. I just got to double check. Yes. Double check. I did remember that, and I was wondering. I was wondering whether you were going to try it or not. Um. One second, to double check something here. Da, 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 da. Because that mage hand, I don't think you can cause it to. Oh, as, a bonus, oh, no. as a bonus action, you can try and uh, okay. There, you can try and shove a creature. Like, yeah, you could try and shove the door. I wouldn't. You wouldn't be able to make it knock. But you could definitely attempt to shove the door. That make a noise. It would, yes. Then that's what I'm doing. That's what you do. That's what you do. So Fiela, um, you're sitting there, just sort of going over maybe some of your notes, or just thinking on what you'd uh, what's just happened outside uh, with your shrine to Namaris. And all of a sudden, the because this door can't be locked, it's all Namaris's old room. It's a bit busted. The door just swings open like really super hard and slams against the wall. Um, this would actually wake you up as well, Hit. Oh, what is that? So the room is still lighted, yes? Room is still lit. Um, you didn't really hear anything else. Just the door, the door just swung open and slammed against the door with, with considerable force, like it was shoved open. Oh, is someone there? Fair, what's going on? Um, can you check the hallway for me, Heads? I don't want to keep my eyes off of Ali at the moment. I sure can. And Hit gets up and up and the door. So, Hit, do you go and investigate the, uh, the hallway? Hit does. Roll investigation check. That is 18. You spend five, ten minutes walking from one end of the corridor to the other, down the stairs, look around the, the main main hall of the guild, come back, can't really see, the, like, there's no sign that anyone's been there, um, apart from obviously the, the obvious sort of signs of the guild being used, but you don't, you, you don't find anybody or any sort of evidence that was there. Sorry, Fiela, there doesn't seem to be anyone here. All right, I think I've got this. Get some sleep. Okay, good night. So, hey, you return to your sleep. And Fiela, what are you doing? Once he's gone, I'm going to look at Ali and say, is there any reason? Head to sleep on the floor that... in the room with you, by the way. Oh, he is? Yeah. Shoot. But he's asleep on the floor. He's snoring? You can, you can wait till you're pretty sure oh. that he's a, he's out to it. And he, he is a bit of a snorer, <laughs> so... <laughs> not really a snore, it's more like a... Almost like a growl as he breathes out. Hallie, do you have any friends that might be able to help you out of this situation that I don't know about? You're my only friend, so no. And I'm going to show him the note, so I guess I can show everybody the note now. So should I read it or no? Yeah, read it out. If, you, if you're going to call him on it, then yeah, read it out. Then what's this about? The bounty on your friend's head has been lifted and should no longer issue the fang. 
And what do you have with the fang? That's nothing important. So I was ready to free you, but if you're going to keep secrets from me, um, it's a deal, I, don't know it's what a to deal do. I made with them. Is this deal crossover what we're doing? A little bit. So how can you be on our team and cross over with the Fang and go against what we're doing? Not going against what you're doing. So if I do for you, are you gonna stay? That's a yes. really long, <laughs> really long pause. That was a really long pause. Yes, but I also need to check something. What? What do you need to check? It's better that you don't know. I'm going to cross my arms and stare at him and attempt intimidation that I don't have and say, <laughs> what do you need to check? Roll a persuasion check. See if you can persuade him to... It's not intimidation. Get, like, it's not. It's not angry enough to be. It's not angry enough to be, be intimidation. But Do I get any proficiency or anything? No, just a straight, uh, straight uh, fifteen persuasion. Um, trash roll a. Actually, no, I'll roll. So what was it? Fifteen. Yeah. Um, you look at Fiala Alexandros, and. You can see that she's genuinely concerned about what's going on. She is worried that you've done something stupid and that you're going to get them all killed. If anything, you'd get me killed, not them. <laughs> not talking to me. Essentially, her persuasion yeah. check is, is a pass, so... If I let you out, you owe me, basically. This is probably going to get me killed, for what I'm about to say, but you can't say anything to anybody. Me? No, never. <laughs> <laughs> Do oh, just roll, roll a, pers a persuasion check. To see if you can convince him not to say anything. Twenty. <laughs> uh, yeah. Roll a d twenty, Alice. Uh, <clears throat> you mean roll a d twenty, Fiona? Tell me what you get. Yeah, I also got a twenty though. Okay, so it'll be your choice whether you decide to keep the secret or not. What do you have to say, Ellie? If I tell you, you could end up getting killed for it too. I don't think they're natural 20s, guys, but... Well, the others must have been. But it's, it's your choice. I can tell you with a chance that there could be repercussions for it. Or you just believe me on my word. I think I want you to tell me because I think we can handle it. Okay. As you know, with Thorpe and him telling me my past, basically, and my clan and all that, I did find out that, yes, my clan assassins and all that. And the, what was that clan again? The one I signed the up for? Fan. The Black Fang were the ones that held the orders, I believe, yes? yes? Yes. For assassinations and stuff, and my clan was used for those assassinations. I have a contract with them, ongoing contract, to kill dragons, all dragons. So technically, it's in line with you guys. Just 
I'm a bit hesitant with one of them. You have to kill all dragons. Yeah. How will that get us killed? Me telling you about these contracts. What happens if you don't kill all dragons? I could be dead. I could end up dead. If I let you go, you owe me like a life boon. I want a big boon. Like, <laughs> if I go down, you're going to save my butt. Understand? Always. So essentially, you're entering into a life Another debt. Another agreement. <laughs> yeah. you're, you're entering into a life debt. Um, Yala essentially owned you. Awesome. And you stay here to prove to the other party that you are trustworthy. I think it would go a long way. For all intents and purposes, Alexandros, you are bound, uh, bound to Fiela through this, through this debt. All right, I'll stay. I let him go. So you, you cut his, cut the webbing and rem remove yeah. it. You are freed to do what you need to do. <laughs> I'll, I'll stay and I'm going to try and convince the others to let me go speak with some people. Well, what? the others are asleep. <laughs> you stay. According to this note, the your bounty is lifted, so we're gonna see how trustworthy the thing is right now. But you can't tell anybody about it. Really can't. I can't value my neck too much. I can't tell about what you're supposed to do, but we all got this note from them, so I think that's fair game, right? Yep, okay. Yeah, well they they all know that. There is a tie between you and the Fang now because of the note. So, so with that, um, Alshonis, you you will need to try and sleep to get your full night's rest. Otherwise, you will suffer a level of exhaustion. And uh, Fiala's already had hers. So, uh, yeah, what are you doing, Alshonis? Sleep. Sleep. So you stay. You stay where you are, um, Fiala. You you don't need to sleep, so you can stay there with the room. You might as well stay in there. Otherwise, unless you want to give hit a bit of a fright in the morning, it's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do? I hate to think I give him what is. I'm going to wild shape into that badger again. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Ali, you got to, wait, before I do this, Ali, you got to like an inkwell or something I can use for my paws before I do this? <laughs> What? An ink roll. I, I need to like make footprints, you know? Does anyone have a cool and ink in their backpack? Does yeah. anyone? It Actually, there, there's a writing desk in every room, so there's probably an ink well at the writing desk. And I need you to rub this on when I uh, shape shift because we're not going to be able to talk. And then I shape shift. <laughs> and oh. I put the ink on. You put the ink on her feet? Or what are you and doing? I yeah. walk all over him again. <laughs> so if Yala walks around the room and on the bed, up over the table and chairs, over Hit's face, down his body, and leaves little, little badger footprints all over the room, um, you return to your natural shape. Uh, do you guys stay in uh, stay in the room for the rest of the night? Yes. And uh, the night takes Alshonis. You finally get sleep. You do get your long rest. Everyone takes a long rest. In the morning, you all awake, awaken. Um, probably a little later than usual. Uh, Thorfi has not visited you during the night, so you suspect that he's wanted to wait until the morning to see you. Um, hit, uh, roll a perception check with disadvantage as you wake up. 
Oh, disadvantage, eh? Yeah, he's still sleepy. Net one. <laughs> You don't notice it. You don't notice anything. You sort of get up and you stretch. You sort of crack your neck a little bit. Um, you didn't. Really, you didn't. You're sort of looking around the room. You're still sleeping. Your eyes sort of. It's all very blurry. You sort of see a figure in the bed. You assume that Elatron is still there, and you you know you sort of yeah, they're still there, sweet. So you sort of wander on down down to the main hall to get breakfast. So, uh, and the rest of you, you do awaken. Uh, what is everyone doing? He goes down first, if he can, to get breakfast. Mm -hmm. and, and prepares everybody drinks and food. Um, hang on. Do we know that Ali's awake and out of bed now and untied? You probably wouldn't at this stage. Uh, Fiona does. So he heads out and does exactly that. It makes everyone, including Ali, a drink because he thinks he's going to have to feed him. Okay. Um, by this time, the rest of you um, are awake. Uh, what is everyone doing? I'm going to go down to have... Well, actually, I'm going to go past the room first. Make sure that um, Fiala and everything is okay, and then head okay. and get... So you get, you get to Namaris' old room, and you sort of push open the door. And you are greeted with Alessandra sitting up on the bed, waking up, and Fiala still sitting at the table. Um, why is he not tied up? See, I didn't run. <laughs> because I thought about all the betrayal that's been happening, and I gave him a shot, seeing the note that you gave Het, and he passed it to me, and he has live by these rules so we should give him a shot uh -huh. okay well if you can think you can trust him and keep him under control i'll take your word for it but i still think he should be told. i think he'll be fine we can go to <laughs> breakfast together uh, I'm gonna head down. So you all head down to the, to the main hall for breakfast, and when you yeah, and when get you... to the main hall, you find Het is already up and um, prepared breakfast, coffee, steaming hot pot of coffee, whatever, whatever your hot beverage or cold beverage is for the morning. Um, no need for perception checks from you guys. You guys uh, notice almost instantly the little interesting footprints. Hit has over one side of his face, down his chest, down one side of his body. Uh, I'm gonna point at Hit and go, "Where did you sleep last night?" Oh, I slept on the floor next to Ali to make sure there was no funny business. But it looks like I might have missed some funny business. Ali seems to be untied. Is everything good? Mm, yes. But you've also missed some other funny business. And I reach around for a mirror and point it at him. And then I go, oh my god, <gasps> the beaver is hunting you now. <laughs> roll, uh, roll a deception check for me. Fifteen? Yeah, Fifteen? Uh, hit roll for quick perception. Fucking that one. <laughs> you uh, you, you look at Fiona and it's like, oh shit, what? Do beavers, do they hunt, they, normally do they hunt their, their prey? Well, this is weird, I don't understand. Uh, only those that don't shower, they really like the, your scent. Maybe, yeah. Now, hold on a minute. I shall on the occasion. Yeah. I thought it was a badger too. It was, but I it, remember it, it thought it was a beaver. <laughs> so, um, okay, right, what do I do? 
Oh. <laughs> so many things. Allie, what do you think Het should do? I'm not really versed in this. You're the druid. You should know. I'll tell you what. Let's just talk about it over meals and, and whatever, and we'll, we'll figure it out. I'm mighty hungry <laughs> after running up last night and then being out and all that crap. Cool. crap. When was the last time you had a bath, Het? Hey? Uh, one, three, seven, twelve. I can't remember. That may have something to do with it. I'm not sure, mate. I'll tell you what. I will have a bath today if that keeps everyone happy. <laughs> I don't know about us, but I'm sure it'll keep the badgers happy, wouldn't it? Definitely. Absolutely. Well, if it's for beaver, bath it is, I guess. <laughs> Uh, awesome. Hank begins to eat his breakfast and drink his drink. All right, I better hurry up and go and get bloody clean then. Uh. So what? While this is all happening, so are we going to wait for Forky here? You're going to take me to uh, the guards, or we're we going to go to Forky? Is there any notices in the guild hall this morning about the bounty being lifted or anything like that? Uh, make a perception roll for me. Actually, no, investigation, because you'll be looking on the notice board. I've got a 19. Now, uh, you look through the, the notices that are there. There's a few questions you guys have seen before, a few of the old ones that when you were um, doing your trials. But no, no... Uh, nothing pertaining to the uh, murder, the changeling murder of, or anything like that at this point. I think when we see Brett and Harder, we should ask about this bounty and see if it's lifted or not before we turn him in. Yeah, uh, it could be a lie, I suppose. Right. So you're you're all sitting down to breakfast. Um, do you all have coffee? Yes. Or some form yes, of beverage. Yes, drinking or beverage. Yes. Alessandros, you guys all. You guys coffee. All coffee. coffee for you, Alessandros. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, that's cool. Uh, with while you guys are sort of sitting down to breakfast, you uh, uh, a messenger boy comes in, probably about fifteen or sixteen. Comes in with a note and uh, sort of opens the door and says, uh, uh, Lions of Valand, uh, anybody have a message? Put my hand up and said, over here, boy. And he sort of quickly hurries over and he sort of part, but partly bows to you and sort of hands it out to you with both hands. And he sort of comes, almost comes to attention, sort of bows and turns on his feet and takes off again. Uh, open it up and read it out. And it is a message from uh, Thorfi asking for you guys to uh, meet him at the Arcanus at your at your earliest convenience. Yay! Thorfi wants to see us. Awesome. Uh, Alessandrus, make right. a Constitution saving throw for me, please. Eighteen. You sip on your drink and and sort of that's a bit bitter. That doesn't taste like it's supposed to. You sort of feel something weird, and then it sort of goes away. You're not sure what it was, but um, nothing seems to happen. So, are you guys going to head out to the Arcanus to speak with Thoffy? Ah, uh, no, we're going to take. Ellie to the Tinga, make sure that the fame first. is true to its word. And okay. If that's the thing, then we're going to ask Ellie about how and why the fame is releasing him from this debt. And then we'll go to see. Okay. So off to the barracks first. Yep. So go see what's his face. Bret Bret Hart. Breton Hart. No, Bret Hart. No, Breton. Okay. <laughs> um, so you guys head off to the barracks. Uh, you got you've been there before, Sadiq, a couple of times. So you know how to get there reasonably well. You lead the rest of the group, and um, 
you get there and and you speak to one of the the little guards the the low, lower guards and um you ask about seeing britain and he goes yeah, 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 just give me one moment i'll just make sure that he's in and he takes off comes back about five minutes later and says yeah he'll, he'll see you in uh in, in just a moment if you just wait through here please it'll lead you to, to a bit of a, a, a through to a bit of a waiting room so um you do that five minutes pass and you and Bretton hart then sort of enters in through a side door and sort of great short he goes ah uh, good to see you all again uh no Morris not with you no no we haven't seen the Morris for a while um okay we're actually here to ask about and i pull out the the bounty the one from last night uh, this one, bounty okay. is this still active and he sort of looks it up looks it over and he goes oh well, as of last night, it was, but it appears as of this morning, uh, the bounty has been rescinded by the uh, the lords of Beaufort. Um, I'm not entirely sure why, but the bounty is no longer active. So, and he looks directly at you, Alessandra, says, so luckily for you, you are free to go. Awesome, thanks. Thank you for your time and leave. And then turn to Ellie and go, so why is the Fang helping you, Ellie? I'll tell you at a later date. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go see Thorfi. So many secrets. So many secrets. Uh, and about there, guys, we'll take a quick break. I need a week. So give me uh, give me a couple Ooh, of minutes. Coffee. We'll take a quick uh, short break. Cheers for the chat for hanging out with us tonight. Um, thank you for the follow. I did see a follow pop up in there. Um, it was Psycho when... Ninja. Psycho Ninja. Thank you very much for that follow. Appreciate it very very much. Very, very much. So was it or wasn't it? Wasn't or wasn't it what? The message I sent. What message? I sent you a uh, in oh. chat. Oh. You didn't send me a message. You send it. You send, it. send it on the Discord, man. For fuck's sake. Fine. No. It no wasn't. more secrets, Ali. You, you don't know what it was. Awesome. Um. <laughs> you have no clue what it so, was. Hey, if, it, if it had been a higher role, would I have known? Nope. <laughs> you have no idea what that funny taste was in your drink. Oh, joy. Yeah, I'm worried about We're that. We're all going to die in there. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so give me uh, just a couple of minutes, guys. I am going to go for a... We... Take really medicine. Drives. Yeah, take away medicine. That's it. <laughs> so I'll be right back. Uh, with the and you guys can put up with us um, uh, from, with these messages.
intermission is this long when I get back. So we're, we're back. Uh, any questions you got, chat, let me know. Um, we'll just wait for the crew to have a, have a loo break and grab a drink. Um, uh, English only in the chat, please. Uh, whoever you were with, I'm not even sure what language that is, but Tui by the looks, it, uh, by the looks of it. Um, we don't speak any other language but English. Van de Veer, welcome, welcome, welcome. Or Halfling or Draconian. Yeah, well, it could be, it could be Elvish, it could be, well, Goblin, I guess. Uh, I think it is actually like Korean or something. Yeah, it looks like Korean or, yeah, looks Korean it to looks me. It looks real cool. It does it look cool, like but I can't understand a, a word of it. Let's try Google Translate. Yeah, good point. <laughs> Uh, translate it, translate to, I'm going to hold this, right? <laughs> okay. I don't know what that means, but, uh, thanks. I can't think of anything that you would say, I'm going to hold this, right? I think the translate is up to shit. Uh, it could be. And, and I think it's a bad translation. It could be a bad translation. Who knows? I mean, I'm going to keep this channel open, maybe? Nice. Possibly. Either way, welcome. Hi. My name's Evildoer. This is my D&D campaign. Uh, the, we are one player short, kind of, at the moment, because that player ran away and decided to play evil. Yeah, <laughs> join the other team. Don't, didn't <laughs> want to play with the rest of us anymore. No. Took her toys and went home. Yeah, threw her toys out the cot and she became a traitor. <laughs> Got even the chats getting in on this traitor thing. <laughs> she uh, just, you know, killed her character and re rolled a new one if she was gotten got tired of it. No, <laughs> I had to join the other Had to join the other team. Also oh, join the other team, you mean? Join the other team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's playing for the other side. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. No head. Literally join the other team. <laughs> He's going to activate Thorny Bush. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, here we go. <laughs> right, we're just about ready. Uh, we could probably start without, without Nutty because she's not actually here right now. Uh, is everyone back? Back to the thorny bush. Sounds like a bloody Star Wars um, sequel. <laughs> right, everyone is back. We're going to get back into it. Thanks, chat, for hanging out with us uh, as long as you have and, and enjoy enjoy the rest of the show. So, guys, you have just left the barracks heading back towards the Arcanus to uh, have a meeting with Thorfi. Um, you approach the uh the north uh, southern side of the the small square heading towards the uh arcanus doors uh can i get everyone to roll a perception check for me please uh actives only no passives god damn it seven i'm rolling so low 20. Oh, you, you right don't, you're not there <laughs> four 24. 24. Uh, Sadiq, you're, you're probably the first to know, you're definitely the first to notice, uh, the weather. Uh, when you guys first left the guild house, um, it was a relatively clear day, not really too cloudy, not, not completely clear, but as, as you guys have walked towards the, um, the Arcanus, the, the weather seems to have rolled in and it started to get quite dark. Very, very similar, in fact, to this, the same sort of weather that you struck when you were in Aris with your parlay with Cass. Um, you look around. Doesn't seem to be anyone around in the street. Oh, well done, Nutty. Well done. Um, you sort of browse around a bit more. Who, uh, who else rolled over a 16? Anybody? Uh, 15. 15. Um, so Sadiq, uh, you 
would also notice a, a few a few shadowy figures sort of lurking in between in one of the in one of the dark alleys as you sort of they definitely look they don't you can't see what what or who they are but they definitely look out of place how far away are they from me uh, about 50 feet 50 or 60 feet I'm just going to point them out to the other like group okay uh what's the plan this doesn't look good this look Feels ominous. Um, I suggest we like move a little bit faster towards the Arcanus because I've got a bad feeling about this. How they get in the middle of us? Yeah. Okay. Right. So as you guys continue heading towards, uh, what was your marching order? So you got Alice Jonas in the centre. Uh, me, Ali, and then Fiala and Head. That's how I prefer. Um, right, so you guys also uh, uh it's not you guys. So Dick, you also notice as you that was on the sort of the right hand side of the square. You also, sort of glancing around, you do notice another hooded figure in in another dark alley, closer to the Arcanus, on the opposite side of the road. Again, you can't really see any facial features or anything like that, um, but you do you do definitely notice there's someone there. Uh, with that, can I get everybody to roll initiative, please, uh, including you? Howdy. Nineteen. Nineteen for Fiala. Twenty-two. Twenty-two for Alexandrus. Thirteen for Hit. Thirteen for Hit. And Nutty. Twelve. And Sadiq. 16. And with that, guys, we're going to uh, switch over to the battle map. Right, so this this is the figure that you saw off to your right hand side at the at the bottom of the map there. Um Sadiq. The others are sort of off off camera, but you can you have noticed them. Um, so as as you sort of guys approach the Arcanus, um, these figures that Sadiq first noticed emerge from the shadows as the clouds sort of roll in and darken the entire day sky, and it, it's almost turned it into almost dusk. It's gotten really really dark. Um, and one figure steps out of the shadows here. Another one sort of just a, just a little bit further down in front of this building. And this one sort of down this alleyway here. You can just sort of see him emerge from the shadow there. Um, <clears throat> with that, you hear from, by this stage, you're probably now only within that 30-foot range of you, Sadiq, and your amulet lights up with uh the undead and the the taller of the three creatures sort of speaks across to you and and says cast sends his regards and just charges towards you guys with a full 30 foot of movement and charges right into you Sadiq. and he will attempt to attack you right off the bat with uh, his multi attack. First now, one is a. What was that? So, the big one close to the stairs, yeah? Yes. yes. And the one with the cape looking one? That's hit. Okay. You're in the middle. Okay. Just checking. So, first attack is a 24. 
Second attack is a 17, and the third is a 23. That's all hits. They all hit. So you will take, uh, as this creature comes flying at you with, with lightning speed, and as it gets close to you, your, your amulet bright, shines bright, bright, uh, blue, I believe, for your for the undead, and he just with lightning speed, three slashes with his with his rapier, a couple across the chest and the third one across your upper thigh, and he deals, twenty four points of slashing damage to you, Sadiq, and he's sort of back into that sort of that attack stance, ready to strike again. And um, with that, his counterparts, or one of the counterparts here, actually, no, both of them. Uh, run at the rest of the group. One slides in behind you, they hit. And that one doesn't quite make it. So hit uh, the this almost the the creature that's sort of grunts. He's got claws. He's got he's got pointy ears and and big sort of gnashing teeth. Kind of looks like a vampire, but just more feral than than what you would expect um, for for a blood a blood sucker. But he comes in and uh, attacks you with two attacks. First one is a natural twenty. I'm so sorry. That doesn't go above my hammer. Oh, hang on. <laughs> Second one is a 21 to hit. So I believe both of those do hit. The first one do, uh, deals a 16 points of slashing damage. And the second does uh, 8 points of slashing damage. So 24 points of slashing damage total. Um, and you... Uh, Nope, that's it. So, twenty-four points of slashing damage as he rakes across your across your back with both claws. The right claw force hits just above the shoulder and down across the, the spine. And the second one hits in the rib area and rakes across your lower back. Ah, my back, not my cape. <laughs> yeah, shredding your cape in the process. And with that, they 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 sort of creep in and surround you a little bit and. Alessandros, you get the first attack for the for the lions. And Fiala, uh, no, you're up Fiala, next. You're up. That'd be a sneak attack too, wouldn't it? Depending on who you're attacking. The one attacking Sadiq. It will indeed. He's within five feet. So make your attack. Seventeen. Seventeen. Uh, as you go to uh, attack this, the vampire, it anticipates your movement and initiates a parry attack, a parry defense, which raises his AC by three, which makes that miss on your first attack. Second attack. So run your second attack. Twelve. <laughs> and that also misses so you you underestimated the how how fast this creature moves and as you strike him with the first attack he quickly parries with his rapier and then knowing all too well the abilities of a rogue as you come in for that underhanded second sneaky attack he sort of moves slightly out of the way just as you go to strike across his uh, again uh, upper thigh and prepares himself for an for an onslaught of attacks uh, are you going to move no. 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 So, Fiela, you are on board. Sadiq, you're up after that. I'm going to move next to Hit. The right next to him, within melee range? Yep. I'm going to touch and cast Cure Wounds on him. Let's say second level. Okay. So you reach out a hand and touch Hit on the shoulder, and Hit, you feel a warm... Fuzzy sensation as Fiela casts Cure Wounds on you. And, and that is 16. And 16 points of healing power as your wounds 
uh, close up and they still ache and, and, and hurt, but they're no longer open and bleeding. Uh, thank you. And as a bonus section, I am going to wild shape into a lion. Ooh, a lion. So as Biela wild shapes hit you and now almost face to face with a large lion sort of sh shakes its large mane and sort of turns and looks at these creatures that are attacking you guys and lets out a, a rather large and loud roar and with that uh, hit you're up okay hit uh, looks around the crew, sees how we're all clustered together, and he holds up his sigil on his loot of the of the lady, steel lady, and he casts bliss on his teammates, uh, all of us. So that will be at second level. So we all get blessed. You cast bliss on everybody. So that means you guys get a. D4, including me, because I've added the extra person, so a D4 to your uh, attack rolls or saving throws, as long as I'm concentrating on it. So you are all marked with the bliss spell. And that is it for hit. That is it for hit. Uh, next up uh, is uh, the figure that was off into, into the left of your your position um what are you doing inari i'm going to come out um 40 feet towards just so i'm next to i can see that one that's just off to the you can pretty much see them all from where you are okay so i'm attacking the one that's closest that's not as close to everybody else to turn you up you stupid quiet i don't think i have my thing close enough oh there we go that's better um so which one are you attacking the the uh, the main vampire or the other two one of the other two is the main vampire the one that's kind of a little bit off to the side they're closer to the to the what you keep cutting off still oh the one that's a little off to the side he's not as close as the other two no the main vampires in combat with Sadiq and no, I'm going to take the one that's not in combat with anybody at the moment. Okay. Gotcha. So I'm going attack. to I'm going to cast Hail of Thorns. On yourself as a bonus action? Bonus action. Go for it. And Hail of Thorns is cast. I am going to roll to hit using my longbow. Fire your longbow at the uh, the creature on the opposite side of the group. Twenty-eight to hit. That definitely hits. So he needs to make a. Hang on, I'm having to flip between things here. I needs to make a deck save. Roll your damage first. You gotta roll I damage have. for your arrow. There's no deck saves for your arrow. Roll your damage for your arrow first. Okay. Because you're shooting with the arrow. The arrow, actually, the arrow. You make your damage on your arrow, then we, then we'll resolve the hail of thorns. Well, there's seven with one and five with the second arrow. You haven't fired your second arrow yet. Okay. Well, there's seven with the first arrow. So your first arrow hits with a seven. Hits him in the upper upper shoulder. Seven points of piercing damage. Now resolve your Hail of Thorns. What's the save on Hail of Thorns? Dex save. Dexterity save. Fails the dexterity save. So roll your damage for your Hail of Thorns. I don't roll six. So six points of uh, more six po more points of piercing damage, which would be a total of oh, four, yeah, seven and six is thirteen. Thirteen, and then I'll roll my second arrow. And roll to hit with your second arrow on your first attack of the round. Twenty-eight 
21. That definitely hits. And roll your piercing damage for your second arrow. Five. So five points. So you guys, uh, you probably don't notice it, but uh, Sadiq, you definitely feel it as in quick succession, two, two arrows just come flying past you and bury themselves in, in the creature to your left. Right, both pretty much in almost the exact same place, just above the, the collarbone. One one above, one just below. And, and it sort of staggers it backwards a little bit and it cries out in pain as it gets hit with his, with his arrows. And sort of glancing around quickly, just sort of get your bearings, you notice this figure has now stepped out of the shadows and um, you can't really tell who they are, but they definitely look to be helping you at this point. Uh, do you want to move... Uh, um, no, not you. Oh, you're talking to <laughs> me. <laughs> you. Um, I will move a little bit closer to the party. How many? How much closer? You got to give me specifics. I've got forty feet, so I'll use my forty feet. So you, you don't want to move into melee range. Remember, you are you don't have any melee. Oh, well, hang on. I will go. Do you want to move straight ahead? Straight ahead down this way towards the um, other building here. Yes. 40, the full forty feet. Yep, might as well. That puts you puts you there. Still has you in line of sight of pretty much every creature there. And so I'm with still in that, the no, there are. Uh, it's still dim. Like it's dim light. You're not in the shadows anymore, but it's still dim light out here because the, the the clouds have rolled in and it, it's almost like dust. Like it's it's not bright, but it's not dark either. Um, and with that, uh, the city guard appear. Down in the bottom corner here, um, a patrol that was sort of doing their thing, and they've heard heard the commotion, and have uh, attempted to rush in and help. That's pretty much as far as they can get this round. Uh, none of them have bows; they're all uh, halberds and swords. So we're back to the top of the round, where the large vampire makes his three attacks again at you Sadiq they, they... Well, that's not fair <laughs> he seems to be no, solely he seems not, to be solely fair, focused on you I haven't had a shot at him yet actually no you haven't that's why I said that's not fair that's not fair of course it's fair I missed you out you were supposed to go before hit my bad you better give you a turn then eh yeah. <laughs> you... my bad people the chair drops 100 bits thank you very much Okay, so, so I'm, Sadiq, I'm sorry about take... that. You you <laughs> attack your you do your thing. <laughs> yeah. All right. So light my sword on fire, and take a swing at the head vampire. And go, the first go for it. Attack is nineteen to hit. Nineteen to hit. That does hit. He's used his reaction for this turn. Oh crap! That's shit roll. Uh, that is six points of damage. Six points of damage. Uh, you will hit, you will get your radiant damage as well. Oh, actually, yes. Um, ah, so I also have to do my D8. And you're going to do your fire so damage. Six is that. Oh, no, the six points actually had the fire damage in it. Sorry. Uh... The six points had the fire already, so just need to roll, just need your radiant. Well, it's six points of radiant plus, because it's undead, another three points, so nine points of radiant damage. Nine points total. No problem. Second attack. Go for it. Uh, that would be a 24 to hit. That does hit. Well, that's a bit better roll. All right, so seven points from the sword itself, five points from the fire, and seven, five, six points of... 12, six, 19. 18 total. points all up. 18 points all up? Nice, nice yeah. damage. As you strike out at the, the, the head vampire here, or the lead vampire in this particular case, you strike out with him with your, with your weapon lit up in bright flames, and as you strike him... It, 
he hit him across the chest and the, that flame burst hits him then the radiant damage kicks in as well and he sort of recoils and hisses at you so that you can see the spittle and and feel his hot breath on your face as he gives you that that real sort of primal hiss as this damage uh hits him pretty 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 nasty pretty nasty um anything else you want to do bonus action movement I would tell you to say hi back, but I don't think you're <laughs> going to survive. Right. Uh, with that, he turns back at you and again strikes out at you. He is, he is hell bent on taking you down. Rolls his three attacks at you. Ooh, this is not. These are not good rolls, people. Not good rolls. Uh, Thirteen. Ooh, Seventeen. 13, 13 doesn't hit? No, 13 misses. 13 misses. So 17 was the second. That's a hit. And 16 on the third. That's a hit. So two hits. So you will take, with the rapier, you will take uh, 2, 8, 16, 20 points of piercing damage as he strikes out with his rapier again. And it's almost like a fencing move. Stabs you in, the, in your lower abdomen, and then as he removes it and tracks it, comes back down with a with a stab and hits you with the top top of the shoulder. I've had one nat twenty tonight, so far. Chat, we're getting there. So, and he's sort of again back in that stance, ready. Moves a, again a little faster than you expected, and you just weren't quite able to uh, drop and move from those attacks. The other creatures now have their turn. The first one, again, seeing the lion appear, is going to attack the lion with this one. Uh, two attacks. One is a 25, and the other is an 8. So I believe the 8 misses, but the 25 yeah, does yeah. hit. Um, it is going to attempt to grapple you instead of uh, doing the damage. So I need you to make a strength check, please. Fourteen. You succeed. As the creature reaches forward to, to sort of wrap its arms around the lion's neck in, 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 in an attempt to try and halt, wrestle it to the ground, it just can't quite get its hands to meet on the other side and, and you just shove back in, in your massive lion body form and, and stagger it backwards and just can't seem to, to grab onto you. The other one is going to uh, flank around to Alessandrus there. And two attacks on you, Alessandrus. Uh, first one is a... Um, what we got here first one is a 12 the second one's a 10 i believe they both miss, miss. you dodge out of the way expert you see this thing coming for you and just almost like the matrix as you move it, it swipes out with its claws and uh, misses those attacks next in the list is you alice on this fairly you're up next and sadiq you're after that <laughs> so i won't miss you out this time still mm -hmm. Attacking the Master Vampire again? Yep. Still sneak attack? Yep. Twenty. Twenty? It's also... Oh, no. Dirty 20 or natural? Dirty. Dirty? Dirty. So, yep. Uh, roll your attack and your sneak attack damage. Uh, your damage for both. Sorry. He's not going to parry this one. He's uh, too involved dealing with Sadiq. He probably didn't even see it coming. Seven with the dagger. And your sneak attack. I'm getting there. <laughs> Twelve with sneak attack. Ooh, nice. So Ooh. 19 damage. So as you uh, lunge forward with that first dagger, as he turns to strike Sadiq, you slam him in the kidneys with that first dagger, opening up a large wound. He sort of reaches back and uh, and sort of turns and sees you and again hisses down at you. Uh, second attack with your offhand. Eight. 
18. 18 hits as well. Roll your damage. Four. Four points of piercing damage with it offhand. Just to add insult to injury, you just you, same wound. Jam your offhand and right into the same wound, just making it a little bit more, a little bit bigger and a little bit more jagged. Uh, with that, I, I know you're definitely not going to want to move just yet. Uh, Sidifiela, it is your turn in your lion form. Sadiq, you're on board after that. Are any of these baddies 20 feet away from me? I think the one in the bottom is, isn't he? Uh, no, he's probably 10 feet, five, yeah, probably 15 feet away from you. Well, shoot. All right, I'm going to take a bite out of the closest one next to me. No problem. Roll your attack. The 16? That, I believe, does hit. And that would be 11 piercing. 11 piercing damage. As you reach, you reach out with your with your large. You're gonna claw or bite. I'm gonna bite. You're gonna bite. So as you lunge forward with with open mouth and bite down onto the shoulder of this of this creature, and uh, eleven points of damage, tearing a chunk out of his shoulder as you sort of pull back, and it still stands. It's a fairly sturdy creature, and it's still standing there, sort of looking at you, almost growling back at you. As and then I'm going to move toward, uh, um, so I'm about 20 feet away from the, the scene. That's my bonus action. You will, uh, you will take an attack of opportunity from the one you just attacked. Well, if I got the mobile and I attack him, am I free of that? Uh, the feet? not in your animal form, I believe. Double check, just double check that for me, because I'm not sure if it's still up in your animal form or not. Actually, being a feat, it probably would. It doesn't say any wild shape or not. It just says I don't provoke. Fire I'll allow it. I'll, I'll, I'll say that it does. I mean, it's part of your character. So, and wild shape or not, I'd say definitely. Well, we'll allow that. Just we'll remember yeah. that for next time. So, you move. So, you're 20 feet away from either one, yeah. the same one, or a different one? Just, yeah, right. There's good. Right there. It puts you about 20 feet from both to go there. Put your halo back on. Just remember, guys, you do have bliss, so you do get a d4 on your attacks as well if you need it. Oh, crap, forgot about that. And not that anyone's really needed it at this point, but um, so that's Fiala's turn. Uh, Sadiq, you are up. And hit, you're on board after that. Yep. Uh, I'm going to, as my bonus action, I'm going to take one of my pills. Not a problem. You can do that. Where the hell's my D4? I had it a second ago. Can someone roll a D4 for me? For me because uh, my one's disappeared. <laughs> Four. Four. Alright, cool. So that would be seven. And, uh, yeah, attacking the lead vampire. Go for it. Oh, crap. Uh, one Crap, that's not good. The D4 doesn't fix that it's crap. a crap for him, not me. Not for you? Okay, what did you roll? Nat 20. Nat 20? <laughs> Go on, nice. Beautiful. And, as I found out, I've actually got Savage Attack. Uh, uh, I didn't know that until... What does until... Savage Attack do? Uh, i got to add another one of my hit... Uh, damage damage dice. Die. Okay. Yeah. So on a natural twenty, you see those nat twenties in the chat. Um, maximize your weapon die, your initial weapon die, and then roll your extra damage. And then add all your modifiers. All right, so he just took 52 points of damage. Ooh. As, uh, yeah, Sadiq just drops his uh, little little plasma pill and gets a little boost of healing. And as it does so, the, the flaming sword comes up and he comes down hard on the clavicle and, and neck of the, 
the lead vampire there and strikes him with fury comes down and opens up a massive wound the, the flames the radiant damage explode against the against the body of the vampire and it cries out in absolute agony and is not looking healthy at all he is take he is taking some serious damage just with that one blow now your second attack sneak uh 19 to hit that uh with that uses his reaction to parry that last attack causing it to miss uh wait a minute we'll make that a 23 to hit then oh you forgot your d4 <laughs> so even there even with the parry it still hits noise uh, he just <laughs> took another 25 points of damage and with that uh, describe the demise of this uh, blood-sucking fiend you have standing before you as you uh, uh, annihilate okay. him with those two attacks i deca decapitate him yep and then go from the and then split him straight down the middle so with that with that second attack you guys watch as, as sadiq just backhand almost double hands his sword backhands it across the vampire's throat removing his head his head leaves his body in a high arc and, and, and then hits the ground and sort of bounces and roll and as sadiq comes back down directly downwards with the sword just splitting the body completely in two and hitting the ground with such a force you hear the sparks and the sound of of steel hitting concrete as he just with so much anger and fury in this attack uh the vampire just is cleft in twain and decapitated on the spot uh with that the vampire spawn that have accompanied this vampire both screech and sort of looking around growling and 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 sort of scrambling they both make their attacks one against hit first Whew. well done Sadiq. well done it was awesome we've got a 24 and a 23 against you hit i believe uh hit i believe they both hit correct both okay. hit um these are both going to be bite attacks um so you take 18 points of piercing damage plus seven points of necrotic damage and your hit points maximum hit points are reduced by seven okay i shall reduce them and Alessandrus, you also get a bitten by the spawn. One is a dirty 20 and a 14. Both hit. You also take uh, 18 points of piercing damage and 7 points of necrotic damage, reducing your maximum hit points by 7. What was the necrotic? 7 points. what's the flow of my hp2 seven points just your maximum gets reduced by seven um anari uh hit you're up next in anari okay uh there's still two of those dudes around hit is extremely unhappy he can't sort of set points out at the moment so he <laughs> do that yeah mate that's all good the maximum thing i can't do but nonetheless uh he Pulls the sigil from his backpack. Just make a note that you've reduced it by seven. Yeah, sorry. It's easy to do now. I think I've got it sorted. Uh, and he pulls the sigil from his backpack that he was given by the entity of the previous night. He holds it in his hand till it draws blood again and he calls out. Traces. Sorry. He traces a sigil in the air. Uh, similar to the face mask of the creature who saw the, the blinding eye. And as he traces the sigil with his finger, magic lights up in the sky and he says, Psychotron! And magical chains come out and hit everything within 
10 feet of him. He does not know that it's going to hit everything. So he activated it without realizing. <laughs> so everyone within 10 feet of hit, uh, that is... Whew. Pretty much everybody uh, except Fiala. Everyone except Fiala. Everyone except Fiala and, and Anari. Okay. Just going to quickly read this and make sure I've got it correct. Uh, you must make a strength saving throw everyone in that area. Um, strength saving throws, I believe the creatures both, uh, one was a 12, one was an 8. Okay, that's a fail. Anything under a 15 fails. Oh, I, sh I, I passed then. Oh, you're good then. So, <laughs> Alexandra. Hey, hey, I, I, um, yeah, I still fail. Okay. <laughs> you can, uh, can you use the bless on those? Yes. Yes, it's a saving throw yeah. again. So, don't forget your bless. So it's a strength. Just a strength saving yeah, throw. Strength saving. But you can add a d4 to, to your roll. Uh, that's a 10. No. Nah. No, okay. So we've got one fail. Uh, a fail from the creature. Actually, I've got a fail for the other. Yeah, both, both creatures fail. So Dick succeeds and Alessandra's fails. So everything that fail takes nine damage and cannot take reactions on the next turn. The one that passed takes half damage and that is all. Okay, nine, nine damage. What sort of damage is it? Necrotic. Nine necrotic damage. Yes, as these magical dark chains appear, um, you all sort of, they're all, they all lash out and, and attack you guys. And yeah, you just, you, you feel that necrotic damage surge through your body. Sadiq, you, your constitution seems to fight it off and you don't take as much, but everything... That failed the save also cannot take a reaction, so just bear that in mind. And uh, Anari, you're up. Uh, so, Hit will also make a bonus action, okay. sorry. Yeah, go for it. Uh, no, I tell a lie, he can't, it's not a cantrip, forget <laughs> Okay, Hit is finished. Anari, it is your now your turn. You're not transmitting. You're not transmitting. Did she mute the mic? You are not transmitting. He's pushing the button, nothing's coming out. No. Uh, something's happening to her mic. No, we can't hear you. Hang on a minute, that might be me. I had issues with this earlier. One second, guys. We're having a bit of a te technological difficulty here. I'm just going to see if I can solve the issue by restarting Discord. No, no, you stay there. Yep. Right. Uh, try again now. You have to ask after the fight. No. Give me one second, guys. Could have been more epic, but hit roll twos and ones. Um. Hello. Yeah, hey. There she is. Right. Okay. I'll just wait for him to get back in. Sorry about that, chat. Problem solved. Averted. Right. What are you doing? Right. Do I need to roll my concentration for my hammer no, thorn? It's gone. You once you once it's hit. So it's you gone. only use it once. Okay. You got to you you got to cast it every time as a bonus action. Well, I'll recast that as a bonus action. Well, double check it just to make sure it doesn't last, if it lasts for a length of time, because it may last for a length of time, minute. but I'm pretty sure it's a one use. Concentration up to one minute, so yeah, I so, guess it's... Uh, no, it'll still be there. No, until it's used, I believe. If you, check okay, it, it's, you can keep it to one minute and let it go off within Ah, uh, yes, that's right, okay. So I'm pretty yeah, sure, I'm pretty cool. sure. So you can recast it, it's fine. Or you can cast uh, Hunter's yep. Mark or anything like that. You've got no, other I'm going to re recast um, Hall of Thorns. On yourself, yes, bonus action. On myself, yep. And then I am going to attack that one that is bottom right. Next to Het and I... next to Alexandrus. Next to Alexandrus. Thank Sorry, you. Ali. With a 27 to hit. That hits. Bloody ranges, man. 
with my hit dice, I get th seven and four is eleven. Eleven. How do you get eleven? One d eight plus four. Okay, just making sure, because Make, you haven't studied your character, so I know you'd be making mistakes. Hail of Thorns is six. So eleven plus six. Seventeen damage all up. Seventeen damage on. A uh, deck save on the Hail of Thorns, and for you as well, Ellie. How big is the Hail of Thorns? I'm pretty sure it's only on the single character. Anything within five feet. That's that one character. Yep. So, Alishonis don't make the save. Oh, yeah. It's a single target. target. It's a single target. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, you really need to study your character. It says... <laughs> Single target. In addition to the normal effect of attack, the target of the attack and each creature within five feet of it must make a deck save. So... Yeah, what you did? You said you got to read these things. I asked you that before. I so, I said. Alessandro, you do have to make the save. Uh, the spawn failed, by the way. You need to ask for the saves before you roll damage on Halo Thorns. 25? I think you save. I think you save too. Is it for half damage or for no damage? For half damage. So you just get three. I'm going to kill that dog. Not if I can get them first. That's the end same, of my turn. Same time every night. He's already... He, he's been barking for like an hour. Um... So, with that, the the strange ranger that has uh, come to your raid fires another arrow directly at the creature in front of you, Alistronis, and it hits it just below the chest, just below the chest line. And with that, a, ha a hail of of thorns spray down from above you, uh, causing three points of damage to you and causing more damage to the creature in front. Um, takes you a little bit by surprise. You didn't realize they were there, um, and. So that is Anari's turn. City Guard now rocking. Uh, one goes there. Five. 31 to there. Um, seeing a giant lion in the center of town and two rather nasty looking creatures, uh, the one that rocked in behind you, Fiel, is going to attack you. Not knowing that you're actually part of the group. All they see is a giant lion in, <laughs> in the middle of town. He's not the smartest tool in the shed. Or the sharpest, for that matter. Um, with a, a 17 to hit. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. And does uh, 7 points of slashing damage to you. Uh, the rest can't really get into combat at this point. So we are back to, the, to Alessandro's. And attacking. Do I get a sneak attack on this one? If you have an ally within five feet, yes. So there is no ally within five feet, so no. Who's that next to me? That's next to you. Not you. Could, they've got to be within five feet of the creature you are attacking. I'm sorry. And that's deep. Yes, but he's not within five feet. He's ten feet away. Oh, who are you attacking? You got two people to choose from. You still the master vampire's dead. One, yeah, one person to choose from. The and Sadiq is ten feet away from that character, not five. There is a square in between them. Ah. Uh, okay then. Normal attack. Sorry, it was my bad. They were sort of over the lines. It was a little bit, a little bit confusing. Fifth, uh, twenty-five. I think that hits. And you're seven damage. Seven points of damage. And your second attack. Drive your first dagger into the to the lower chest of the creature, right to the hilt. Okay. 
And 15, I believe, also hits. Yes, it does. Six. And does six points of the piercing damage to the creature. And again, you're, you're one into the chest, the other one sort of up under the armpit. A quick jab, jab. Try and uh, take them down as quickly as possible. And it, it sort of, it, it, it's moving a little bit slow. It's not really looking like it's overly hurt, but it's definitely taking damage. Um, with that, the spawn retaliates. It's not a reaction, this is its turn. And um, attacks back at you with a, a b -b -b bite attack. Two attacks. Whew. Oh, only one, sorry. One attack with a bite, one claw. Bite attack was a 13. Claw attack, yeah, was, a a claw attack was a dirty 20. So you take so you eight points back. of slashing damage with the claws, and you take six points of piercing damage from the bite, and another seven points of necrotic damage, which also reduces your maximum hit points by seven once again. Whew. Hmm. And you watch as the, the wounds you just opened up on the creature close and stop bleeding. And the other one is going to turn and roll into the city guard seeing them coming you'll get an attack of opportunity hit as he moves away from you okay um hit will hit he does not usually use his hitting he just <laughs> lashes out with one arm because he has no weapon in his hands uh that will be that will be just about nothing 11 12 13 14 to hit and that does not hit, unfortunately. So the creature turns and sort of quickly dashes away towards hold, the city guard. Hold on, bless. Bless, roll your d4. Uh, 17 to hit. That's That'll better. hit. So unarmed damage. It takes one damage. <laughs> it takes one damage, plus your strength. Yep, he takes one damage. <laughs> okay. It's the, the spawn moves away and takes one damage as hit. Reaches out with his uh, with his dragonborn claws and uh, an attempt to try and stop him from moving, uh, and this one's going to make his uh, double claw attack at the city guard. Oh my god! Fails both miserably. Strikes the shield of the city guardsman. The city guardsman, you hear him kind of shriek and and surprise as this thing just darts at him. Um, Fiela, it is your turn to stick your arm after that. I'm going to go to pounce the one next to Sadiq, even though I know the guard's probably going to try and hit me. He will indeed. So um, we'll resolve the attack of opportunity, which is a 17. So that will hit. Yeah. So you'll take uh, six points of slashing damage as you move away from him. But you can uh, attempt your attack at the, uh, the All right. spawn. I'm going to uh, do a pounce, and that's yep. a strength save. Strength throw. save. Strength. Ooh. 19? Uh, 17, sorry. Uh, okay. Yeah, you you win. So you, it generally doesn't get knocked prone, but you still he'll still take the damage of your attack. So roll, roll to hit for one. I think you still got to roll to hit for that. Uh, I don't think I do, but it's a 17. I rolled, um... Okay, actually, I'm not sure if you have to roll a hit for that or not. There's no points for pounce. Uh, it's just a knock prone, and if I win, I get a bonus action bite. Ah, yes, okay. So the pounce fails, but you do you do make it over there, and it tends to jump on him, and he just he seems to hold you up. With a, cause he's a reasonably strong creature. Um, but I believe he can still a attack with that still. You can still make an attack, or is that your whole right. action? Um, I, think I can make a bite attack if you want me to. Let's have a quick look here. 
all these all these creatures that you can be it's kind of hard to keep track, I know, it is confusing, keep but track of them all the but counts. it's all good um we'll make a judgment call on this in just one second so the lion leon so oh, we got, i'll get a claw attack i think if the lion moves at least 20 feet straight forward creature then it, uh and then it hits it with a claw attack on the same turn so you do have to make the claw attack awesome so roll so you you definitely hit Seven, with your claw attack 17 yeah yep. so roll your damage on that and he still saves against being knocked prone the eight flashing eight flashing damage not a problem so as you leap forward attempting to knock this creature prone um you rake out with your claw you get the the claws in but you don't don't quite have the strength to to bring it to the ground so with that it is now Sadiq's turn with Het on board after that. So I pretty uh, much know Sadiq's just going to roll into combat. Well, first, <laughs> first I'm going to roll this to oh, see if I got back. Roll your heal. Second, I'm going to say the lions with us stop attacking them. You're going to yell and that out to the city guard, no problem. Yeah, at the city guard. And then attack the most closest um, vampire spawn yep, thingy. no problem, which nearest. is right next to Alshondras there. Roll your attack. Uh, am I still got the bliss? Yep, it's still up. Uh, hit, did you, you didn't yes, take damage no. that, so you were fine, didn't you? I did. Uh, yes, 20. 20. 20. A, a dirty 20 or a natural? Ah, uh, dirty. Dirty. Sweet. That hits. Now yeah, for the damage roll. Was the damage. I damage. DM, I have to make a save. Yeah, you didn't, uh, you didn't take any damage that time. But yeah, because you're concentrating on bliss, aren't you? Correct, yes. Yeah. I get out. 21 points of damage. 21 points. For your first attack, you swing away with the flaming sword, strikes out again, hitting this creature across the shoulder blades and flashing out with radiant damage that uh, almost knocks it over onto on, on its ass. And uh, your second attack, sir. Uh, that would be a uh, 90. That does hit also. And your damage... Twenty-two damage. Twenty-two damage, and this this creature is now not looking healthy at all. With Sadiq coming in to aid Alexandrus and Fiela in uh, ridding this world of this uh, foul creature, takes two huge hits, and is not looking healthy at all. Um, if that's your turn, Sadiq, hit your uh, you're up, and Anari, you're up after that. Yep, it's up for hit. He draw his loot's on a strap. He draws the loot forward. He holds it up. And he activates... Oh, should I, shouldn't I? He activates Need More Gain using one use of his Bardic Inspiration. Go for and after it. Need More Gain, he then, still with the symbol in his hand of, of, the, of the Rattlehead, he holds it tight and he says, Euthanasia! And he, he cast the equivalent of Eldritch Blast at the uh, one that walked away from him. Okay, so Eldritch Blast away. Rolled a hit. This is two blasts, so... Yep. Just checking what this does. New spell one to two plus three. Uh, Should be. I have to hit first. Yep. Uh, Plus seven, so sixteen and twenty-three. They both hit, so roll your damage. It would be a D ten, I believe. I don't... They are indeed D tens. That is six and four, so that's ten total damage between them. And, and that's force damage or thunder damage. It is force. It's force damage. Force damage, yeah. So yeah, for for the first time, you you guys see 
uh, what describe describe the color and and everything of your eldritch blast blasts to your two blasts uh, of energy. They're basically two icy spears almost, but they they're not solid. They go almost like a magic missile where they streak through the air and they home in on whatever the creature is I aim at. But they as soon as they hit him, it's like ice blasting out. So you watch as this these icy spears. Uh, surge forward from Hit's loot and strike this creature in the back and breaking and, and covering it in, in its icy shards. Um, and yeah, it, it shoves it forward almost off its off its balance as the impact strikes him. Uh, bonus action. And as a bonus action, Hit will cast, looking at Sadiq, taking a little bit of damage, Hit will cast Healing Word at... Because uh, that was a cane trip, so I can do that. Healing <laughs> word at third level. Heal he away. Points the, uh, he points the loot at Sadiq and he says, This is the painkiller, Sadiq. And he heals away. <laughs> it's good, it's good. 13 points of healing. So Sadiq, you uh, hear the bardic, the bardic song from your dragonborn friend, and the healing power strikes you, and you heal thirteen points of HP. I'm and... in the yellow. <laughs> and uh, hit is that your turn? Hit will back away fifteen feet from all the action towards the building behind him. Not a problem. Done. And Anari, uh, your turn now. Is that guard that hit Fiala within 10 feet of Yes, yes it is. I look at him and I cast bees. Uh, not a good needs idea, to, but okay. Needs to roll a con save. One second. Uh, it fails. Takes five damage. So just out of nowhere, a swarm of bees just swarm around the city guardsman. He's got no clue what's going on, and he's just swatting and being stung, and he sort of turns and tries to run with his cloud of bees running around, uh, swarming around his head. Um, what is that? A action cantrip? That's a cantrip. Cantrip. Okay. So the action or bonus action. Uh, that one action action so you have a bonus action left and movement I am going to stay where I am there I am so you're not not gonna you don't have a bonus action I don't have a decent bonus action you got hicks you got hail of thorns Uh, Hunter's, oh, Hunter's Mark, sorry. Mark. I can cast Hunter's Mark. On what creature? The one that is in melee range of the other... Other city guard? Yep. Use green to mark the Hunter's Mark. To uh, cast your bonus action Hunter's Mark on that creature. Uh, mm -hmm. read, read it up so you know what it does next time. Yep. And with that, it is now the city guard's turn. Uh, this one rocks into here. This one now hearing the the cry of Sadiq. Well, they surround that vampire. This one's still running around like a headless chicken, with it covered in bees right now. But these guys all make their attacks at this uh, vampire spawn. Uh, one, all three hits, and they do between them. 19 points of slashing damage on that creature there and pretty much you did it did you know you just you see it probably more than anyone else hit you probably see it too that it's all all at once it's all slashing out at this creature and just opening up multiple wounds across all around it and it's the both these creatures are not looking healthy at all uh back to the top of the round alishandras you are up all right let's kill this fucker you now have the sneak yeah, attack on it as well. Uh, 
20. Dirty 20. Dirty 20, that does indeed hit. Roll your damage. Five dagger. Ten. 15 sneak. points. You bury your dagger deep into where the heart would normally be on these creatures, and it it takes its breath away almost. Like you almost hear that exhale as you sink it deep into its chest. Not quite dead. Second attack. Second attack coming up. Fifteen. Fifteen points. Nice. And as you... Uh, no, no, no. That, oh, fifteen to hit. <laughs> that hit, sorry. That does, sorry. I was going to say fifteen on a single dagger. Eh, it's okay. Seven. Still enough. As you reach forward with your, your offhand and you literally run it deep as you can across the throat of, of this creature, almost severing its head completely, and it rocks back and just falls flat. Unmoving and dead. So bonus action, uh, not bonus action, movement for you. Uh, you have, negative. You have one creature left. I think the city guard can take care of it. Potentially. <laughs> Potentially, you don't know, but yep. So you're not going to move. Uh, dimly lit, is it? Up, uh... Um, yeah, it'd be dimly lit because the cloud has definitely rolled in. Although it started to dissipate now that the lead vampire has died, but still, I'd say it'd still be dimly lit enough that if you wanted to, you could. Yeah, we'll do that then. Uh, whereabouts are you going to Shadow Step Two? Right behind him. Right behind him. Poof, poof. Alessandra disappears from beside your, beside you there, Sadiq, and reappears at the flank of the Vampire Spawn. Um, it is now the Vampire Spawn's turn, who's going to make two uh, claws attacks at uh, two of these guardsmen that are attacking him. Uh, one fails, one succeeds, and does uh, 12 points of slashing damage to one of the guards there. That is its turn. For Yale, it is now your turn, Sadiq, you're up after that. Oh my, well, that little guy up there is surrounded, isn't he? He pretty much is. I'm going to move up next to Hat and get out of wild shape. So you get to you move to Hit's side and revert your form back to, back to Fiela form. I'm going to cast Cure Wounds third level. Go for it. On, on who? Head, I think. On head? Okay, cool. Hang on, I have to do math. <laughs> math is hard. 23. 23 points of healing... Holy oh, crap! You. We that just got we just got raided, guys. <laughs> Jesus, Dungeons and Dragons. We had some nat twenties in the chat, ladies and germs. We just had a massive raid. Sorry to break uh, immersion there for for a moment. Uh, but back to the back to the story. We uh, hit you. Take twenty three points of healing from uh, Fiela. She drops form. Is that your turn, Fiela? That'll be it. That'll be it. So, Sadiq, you are up to... Alright, so... That dude's surrounded. I'm going to fling my um, dagger at it because I can't be bothered. So he's going to just going to hurl your dagger at it? Go for it, man. Go for it. Roll to hit. Okay, so that... Um... That would be frick twenty ninety. That does indeed hit. Uh, Roll your damage. Fifty four. Wait, does the radiant? Uh, I don't know. 
Yeah, the radiant. There'll be radiant damage with that as well. If you're, if you're using the dagger that I'm that I think you're using. Ah, uh, no, no. The the red won't. Uh, the right right of dawn. I've got to read that. Just. It, it's only one weapon, isn't it? If uh, you've already used your blood hunter ability on your sword. Now the right of dawn. You'll learn the right of dawn, which oh, that. deals radiant damage to additional. Uh, uh, does an additional radiant damage of three to undead and at 11 it's to everything i don't actually have to activate it no on I'll, it. I'll it's just it. yeah it's part of it's part of your ability so yeah add it add it to any attack So your damage with your throwing dagger. Okay, so that's 14 points on that hit. And then it reappears in my hand. It does, indeed. You throw your your dagger, your silver dagger, and it strikes the vampire spawn in, square in the center of his back. And as it hits, it vanishes, reappears back in your hand. Second attack. 28 to hit. That definitely hits. Uh, and that does 15 points of damage. And describe the how this creature dies as you fire your silver dagger into the back of its skull. Literally, that happened. There you go. <laughs> so, Sadiq fire, leads back, aims with one hand, and just throws. And the dagger hits true, right in the back of the vampire's skull. And as the dagger vanishes and reappears back in Sadiq's hand, the vampire's eyes roll back, and he sort of rocks back on his on his heels and just falls with a heavy thud against the paved surface of the city square in front of the, the Arcanist Guild. And we are out of initiative, guys. Well done, team. You have defeated... The uh, vampire ambush. Uh, so, with that, what are you doing? Who? That was sweaty. I want a wild chip back into a lion just so I can glower at the guards. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a wild shape left today, though? You did one. Uh, after you'd actually long rested in the guild house, and this, I believe, was your second. Do you are you able to do it another time? I don't think you can yet. I think it's only twice. I think, yeah, damn. Just double check your wild shape. I'm pretty sure you can only do it twice. So unfortunately, you cannot do so. Well, I don't know what was going on there, guys, but this stuff is hit around, and what it's still. Uh, DM question, by the way. How yes. long is this temporary hit points that we've lost? Uh, till you take a long rest. Okay, yep. So you, your maximum hit points are reduced by the amount uh, given uh, until you uh, rest for a long, or basically take a long rest for eight hours. Cool. Sweet. Cool, cool. Oh, uh, yeah, Team Sadiq. Um, yeah, do we head into our shuttle so we figure out what went on here? Did you know these people? Well, uh, Cass, remember how he sent some of his guard after us? I think these are the ones that he sent after he pulled the other ones back. But he's not going to get these three back, so who really cares? Uh, loot the bodies, by the way. Loot, like, loot thy bodies. You want to investigate the bodies. Uh, Correct. Whoever, well, whoever's going to investigate, who wants to helm the investigation... Uh, you can, someone else can assist, give advantage if you wish. Yeah, I'll assist. So whoever's going to helmet, roll investigation with advantage. Helmet. Uh, 19 for my investigation, please. 19. So the vampire spawn, as you check those bodies, they're not really carrying anything. They're, they're virtually naked. They like, have remnants of um, what clothing they would have worn in life. But uh, you know, have enough knowledge about vampires and the vampire spawn to know that these creatures are, are 
barely even capable of any conscious thought they're more animal than our human uh, or once were human but uh, the lead vampire however has a plus one rapier it's a very fine a very fine rapier uh, he is wearing um, some finely made studded leather armor and is also carrying with him a coin purse which holds approximately let's say whew, let's have a 56 gold pieces um apart from that that's pretty much all he's all he's got on him so who's writing that down uh you've got the bag of holding so throw the stead of the low in that we'll sell that to 52 so essentially so you've got, you got a yeah, you gold got a rapier studded leather and the 56 gold yeah well it's actually uh oh, what was it 13 gold each Siddiqui might keep its gold he has no use for it no looting these bodies And as you guys are uh, inspecting the bodies and looting the um, the lead vampire, the strange ranger approaches you. Namaris, well, shit, no, Anari, would you <laughs> would you describe what they see? <laughs> Freudian slip there. Um, Alessandrus, uh, uh, Sadiq, Fiela, and uh, Het, you all see. A, a female approach you hooded uh, she re removes the hood as she approaches you uh, Anari please describe yourself um, I as I walk over they see a six foot tall elven lady with silver hair pale skin and a silver necklace bearing the mark of the Emerald Enclave. The only one in the group that would even know what the Emerald Enclave is would be you, Fiala. You recognise the sigil immediately. Uh, the rest of you, are just re all you see is, is the sigil of a, uh, a stag's head around the, this person's neck. Uh, but yeah, so you, you find a, a very attractive elven woman. Typical high off sort of look, very high cheekbones, um, very tall, s slim build, but capable, um, not muscular, but definitely able to just, they definitely look like they're able to, to handle themselves and obviously aided you in this particular battle. And um, the city guard is sort of milling around, sort of kicking and poking at the vampire spawn and, and that as well. Not really saying much to you guys. They they sort of know who you are to look at, so they they're just sort of half price starting to clean up the mess. So I wander over and say good morning. It's not, that was yeah, it's a little kind bit of morning. Of sport for the morning. Uh, well, mid morning, lunchtime. Yeah. Maybe mid morning. Were you Always. perhaps sent to help us? By anyone? Yes, I was. My name's Anari, and I'm f I've come from the Emerald Enclave. And who are they? They are we. Uh, it's I've been sent to assist you, the lions, in tracking Kosis and to prevent more of the undead coming. In my, um, pardon my knowledge, would I know anything about the Emerald Enclave? Uh, give me a history check. Anyone who, anywhere, anyone who wants, who, who thinks they might know or may want to know possibly about them, uh, roll a history check. Who holds Eldritch Blast in his hands and says, I don't trust her. <laughs> no, worries. <laughs> no worries. I look at Het and then... Hold up. Before we get there further, Sadiq, what was your roll? 15 15 um you've you've heard of the emerald enclave 
um, with your studies and dealings with the undead and demons and fiends and the Emerald Enclave, from what you've read, deals with keeping the natural balance of things. So anything unnatural that makes it onto the Prime Material Plane, they have a vested interest in, in trying to stop that from happening. So they definitely would be a welcome ally against undead fiends, uh, things from the abyss, even things from other material, pl other other planes of existence. And you can plainly see that this this person is uh, a ranger. They carry a bow. They're, they're, they're dressed like a, a hunter would be. And you would definitely sort of get an idea that they would be possibly an expert tracker or dealing with these particular entities. They touch Hat's arm and say, hold on, I'm part of the Emerald Enclave as well. We can trust her. Oh, we don't know her. She might not be part of the Enclave. She could be just saying this to get on side with you. I look over at Hit and in Draconic. I say, Hit, I, um, nice to meet you. I understand you've had a lot of sorrow lately, but your great-grandfather Edward was a great man. It says in Draconic back. I still don't trust you. <laughs> but he drops the spell. Okay. I just well, smile and stand there. I'm going to say I'm sorry, but at the present moment, we have other business and leave. And you just head towards the Arcanus? Yes. Oh, and head follows too. I'm left standing with her. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> I look over at um, Fiona and say, would you mind if I join? I'll have to forgive them. They're having some trust issues right now. But I see that you're yeah. missing one. There should be five of you. Cutting off yep. every word still. I said, I see that there should be five of you. You're missing the barbarian? Yeah, we are uh, headed to Thorfi right now to find out more about that. I will come with you. All right, I'm going to follow uh, the my group then. And Anara, you'll follow Fiela? I'll follow Fiela. So you all enter the Arcanus. The Arcanus is open and uh, it is empty apart from Thorfi who is sitting in the main hall uh, awaiting your arrival. And that is where we will end tonight's show. Uh, we will pick up at this point next Sunday night, 7.30pm New Zealand Standard Time. Uh, thank you so much, guys. Another amazing show tonight. Um actually worked out pretty good finishing about this time uh sorry you couldn't get to talk to thorfi tonight but you'll have to wait till next week son of a bitch <laughs> <laughs> uh thank you to the raiders stopping by tonight and thank you for the follows you guys are awesome thank you so so much for hanging out with us and stopping by to check us out uh, my name is evildoer i am from new zealand uh, my players uh nutty nutty tart aka anari oh. anari fandras was just uh joined or technically just joined with this character but has been a player from the very beginning uh, my partner also lives here in new zealand uh master hit maydun aka baz my little brother also joining us here from new zealand and alessandra sadiq and fiela uh friends that have joined us from australia um that is our player base tonight uh, thank you guys for playing again role play was awesome as per usual uh xp tonight we will have i gotta where is my calculations uh xp whoo, 1500 yeah, let's say 1750 each adding a bit of role play in there and yeah, story. story so 1750 xp each tonight and uh yeah so every sunday night 7 30 p.m new zealand standard time 
uh, if you check out my offline screen, it'll give you the times in Pacific, Eastern, and uh, Central. So for those of you uh, across across the pond in the, the US and in other countries, uh, it'll have those times here. My schedule is on an app that also gives you a local time. But do come and hang out with us again. If you want to catch up with this episode, with this whole story, check out my YouTube, which has just linked there i see go check it out all the previous shows are there the previous 23 episodes uh so this was episode 24 in our persistent campaign so we are going to finish up for the evening uh we should raid someone we'll carry this raid on uh let's see who who else is on maybe another dnd streamer uh see if we can keep the dnd rolling one second to see who's available if you've got if you know of another dnd stream that you do visit let me know we'll check them out but otherwise i'll just have a look to see who else is live here thanks blue jay i appreciate you stopping by it was a it was an amazing night oh, we've got another kiwi here streaming some dnd i think we'll go raid them See where they are in their the session. Poison. What's the decks for? Episode, they're an episode in episode 19, so we'll go chuck yeah. them around anyway. Uh, I think. Night, everybody. So thank you so much again, everybody, for hanging out. Uh, just give me one second, we'll start the raid. <laughs> Run away. And we will get that underway. So. Let's share the D&D love with another Kiwi here. There we go. Raid has started. Don't have to do anything. Just uh, let it let it do its thing and the raid will start. Thank you so much. We will see you again uh, on Tuesday for gaming. Back again on Sunday for D&D.